Forest offense got off to a fast start last week against Utah State, posting 38 points in a tight win. Rice's defense showed a newfound toughness, pushing Army to the brink a week ago. Tonight, it's a high-octane offense against the punishing defense as Wake Forest takes on Rice here in Houston. And we welcome you to hot and steamy Houston, Texas here at Rice Stadium for college football presented by Geico. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons out of the ACC take on Rice out of Conference USA as the Owls play their home opener here tonight in the 70th season of football here at Rice Stadium. Welcome upstairs to the broadcast booth alongside my broadcast partner, seven years an offensive lineman in the NFL, Ross Tucker. My name is Ben Holden. So good to see you and have you with us for Friday Night Lights here in Texas. Ross, last week we saw Rice open their season at Army, a last-minute loss for them, 14-7. to On the other side, Wake Forest, they had a literally a last-second win at home against Utah State. Two very different games, but they were both incredibly exciting. Meeting with all the players and coaches yesterday, we said, do the same thing you did last week <laughs> because that was awesome. We were expecting a great chance of having another really close game between two very different teams today. Yes, contrasting styles to say the least. And for Wake Forest, it all starts with Jamie Newman. As I like to say, hello, Newman. <laughs> He is something special. He's only started five games, but he has been great for them. And I think last week was his best game ever. You see his stats there at the bottom. He was even clutch late in the game, makes that throw to Surratt, which led to the game-winning touchdown pass to Kendall Hinton. He really outplayed Jordan Love, the quarterback for Utah State, who's a projected first-round pick. He certainly did. Love had three interceptions. Now, for Rice and their defense, about as good as I've seen anybody play Army defensively. It was led by Antonio Montero, number one, the linebacker. He was sideline to sideline making 11 tackles, but they got more penetration against the Black Knights than you almost ever see. Eight tackles for no gain or loss of yardage. Nobody does that to Army, but Rice was able to get that done last week. They certainly were in a different animal here tonight as we touched on for Mike Bloomgren and his team. Bloomgren in his second season spent six seasons as the offensive coordinator with David Shaw at Stanford. On the other sideline, Dave Clawson, back in 2014 on this very date, he won his first game as Wake Forest head coach, and tonight he's got his squad here deep in the heart of Texas on a hot and steamy one. The weather, Ross, it's cooled off about 10 degrees down there on the field since about 7.30 local time. And it's 97 right now with a five to 10 mile an hour wind. It feels like 102. The impact that you think that may or will have on this game? Well, two things. Number one, I almost never say this, but I'm glad I'm up here and not down there tonight because it is still really hot. But Wake Forest, runs one of the fastest offenses in college football. They had 105 snaps last week, a school record. They're one of the top five schools in all of FBS football in how quickly they get their snaps off and how many offensive plays they have. Rice has to try to get some three and outs or rotate in some guys. Otherwise, they are going to be gassed. Fair catch called for by Christian Beal Smith back there. He's going to start at running back for them tonight. An undisclosed injury to their starter. <laughs> Kate Carney, got to let the cow finish. <laughs> so he's out of the lineup, but we talk more about Jamie Newman. Four and one as a starter, just five games played last season. This team started the year with Sam Hartman at quarterback, but Newman in three of his five wins, they've been comeback fashion, Ross. Well, in some of the teams they beat, NC State, they smashed Duke. They came from behind against Memphis. Yeah. And eight lead changes last Friday night against Utah State. So here goes Newman in that Wake Forest offense as Beal Smith breaking right through there. And Christian Beal Smith as Montero tracked him down from behind. That'll move the sticks, though, as we look at the Chick-fil-A lineups for the Demon Deacons. Number 14's a special one, isn't he? He is only a sophomore, but he is big time. Last week, 158 yards and a 70-yard run and catch that got them down to the one-yard line. Not much doing there. We take a look at the Rice defense, and we visited with Antonio Montero yesterday. Great young man and a great football player here for Rice. Only 19 years old, was the kicker, punter, running back, everything in being named Mr. Minnesota a couple years ago. He was a very talented one. Rice glad to have him, and 
Newman leaning forward out to about the 48-yard line. So you mentioned the plays that Wake ran last week. There were three teams in the FBS that ran over 100 plays. Wake, Boise State, and their win at Florida State, and Dave Clawson's former team, Bowling Green. Which is why you need to find a way to make a play here on third and medium. These are the plays that Rice needs to make a some type of stop here. I want to see them heat up Jamie Newman. If they sit back and play coverage, he's going to tear him apart. Wake was 13 of 24 last week on third down. They get it here into the hands of Kendall Hinton. And Kendall Hinton continues to play big. Moves the chains. Had that touchdown that Ross talked about in the open last week to win it. First and 10 Wake. He's just an incredible story. Former quarterback, the only player in Wake Forest history to score a touchdown in five seasons because he read shirted after he got hurt early in 2016. Pass complete there to Scotty Washington. He was slated, Hinton that is, was slated to be their starter last year, was suspended the first three games. He had a quarterback battle like they did this year. Hartman won it last year, Newman won it this year. Here is Christian Beal Smith trying to find some room on the near side and a good job by that front of Rice that we saw last week. Ross be very effective against a very effective run game. Well, they had Ar held Army to 231 yards rushing, which is very low for the Black Knights. Brings up another third down situation here. On the ball quickly is Newman. They need three. Newman's got time near side. Fires, catches made, shy of the 20-yard line, but they'll have the first down. Catch made by Scotty Washington, pick up a 17. Even when these receivers are covered, Ben, they're not. Scotty Washington, 6'5", 225, Bird had pretty good coverage, but these Wake receivers, all former basketball players, all really big physical kids. Washington, four for 46, and a touchdown last week in their win over Utah State. Short pickup here for Christian Beal Smith getting the nod for Cade Carney here tonight. Time now to take a look at tonight's red zone brought to us by Verizon. Pretty good numbers there, Ross. Very good numbers. And the one time they got stuffed, it was fourth and one. They got stoned by Utah State. Newman and Washington's got another one. And he's tripped up. It'll be down inside of the five yard line. They'll spot him down near the two. It's going to be first and goal, Wake Forest. Andrew Bird, left side of your screen. He read it and jumped it and just missed it. That ball went through Bird's hands. He almost had a pick six the other way. Ekpe saved a touchdown. Now Wake Forest trying to power their way in. And Christian Beal Smith took the football. And Christian Beal Smith takes it in for a Wake Forest touchdown there. That is really what Wake does offensively. Up tempo, mixing the run and the pass. This is just a zone read. Beal Smith powers himself in. They have a really slow mesh point between the quarterback and running back. We'll talk about that later, but what an impressive drive. Newman is still on fire from last week. Hello, Newman. Hello, Jerry. Nick Skiba on for the point after. He's yet to miss one in his career, 56 for 56. Wake Forest has scored in 14 straight quarters. They're up 7-0 early is very very effective and very efficient 10 plays 75 a little over three minutes capped off by a two-yard plunge into the end zone by christian beal smith he also scored last week jamie newman four of four for 46 yards beal smith five carries for 24 in the touch there's kate carney on the right without the pads on not going tonight we were told that about an hour prior to kick off here tonight. He is a fun player to watch, Ross. That's a shame. I love that dude. Yep. Watching the tape last week, he had one of the best runs I've seen in a long time, running over and through three different guys for Utah State. He's only 69 yards away from 2,000 yeah. for his weight career. The majority of his career, he's had to split time in the backfield. Last year was Matt Colburn. As Austin Trammell, they're do everything Junior captain back deep awaiting the kick of Nick Skiba. Wake Forest on top, 7-0. See what Mike Bloomgren's team counters with. Trammell takes it out over the 20. Good return to about the 25-yard line where he's tripped up. They'll give him the 26, and it's time for our Chick-fil-A lineups. And the redshirt freshman Riley Green out of Plano, Texas. Only threw it 14 times last week. Ross, if... 
Rice is going to do more than just run the ball that they did last week. What's he got to do tonight in your mind? Well, they love what the fact that he gets them in the right plays, and they want a major in running. I mean, even if they have a normal 60 to 65 snaps, they're probably only going to throw at 20 to 25, but he's got to hit the open receivers on the bootlegs and some of the wide receiver quick passes they throw outside. Aston Walter starts in the backfield in the eye. Now they find Trammell near side at the 30. Austin Trammell, they call him Mr. Consistent. He drags the defender, moves the chains, and the rest of the Rice offense, Nashawn Ellerby, he was a monster last week. Nine carries, 103 yards, including a 54-yard touchdown run against Army. He was the Rice Owl offense. He was, especially on their second quarter scoring drive. Four plays, 75, took 220. Ellerby had every yard, including a third down conversion, a 15-yard pass play. Love that first play by Rice to try to soften up the Demon Deacon defense a little bit. They are stacking the box to try to stop this run game. Here's Aston Walter, tries the right side. Maybe a half a yard there on the run by Walter. Let's take a look at the Wake Forest defense, and Justin Sternat had a huge play late last week. Really enjoyed talking with Justin yesterday. Such an impressive young man, fifth-year senior. He's the captain, and also had the game-winning interception of Utah State quarterback Jordan Love a week ago to seal the win for the Demon Deacons. That had to feel awesome. Yeah, Fifth year senior, home opener, quality opponent, game clinching interception. With 17 seconds remaining at his own 20 yard line. Here's Deshaun Ellerby, his first crack at it in the backfield. Tried to get back to the line of scrimmage. I don't think he did. It was Deion Bergen Jr. the first to get him for Wake Forest up front. This is the exact situation that Rice is trying to avoid. Right. Third and long, Wake Forest brings in three more pass rushers now to keep them fresh. Keep an eye on Boogie Basham, number nine. Don't call him Carlos. He is at the top of the screen. He's a good one off the end. Rice last week, three of 11 on third down. Wiley Green, pressure coming, ball came up. And Boogie got in there and boogied his way to Wiley Green, who got the pigskin. Wake Forest has it. So Boogie Basham gets in there, puts the heat on Wiley Green. And it's Wake Ball. Told you to keep an eye on Boogie Basham right there. They are going to run a twist. Watch him loop around. The tackle goes up. Basham loops around. They don't pass it off. And he gets the strip of green. Wake recovers. Exactly what Rice could not have happened. They did a terrific job a week ago protecting the football, but they did a horrible job protecting the football a year ago against Wake. The Demon Deacons had two defensive touchdowns, and especially against this prolific offense. You can't give them the ball back that quickly, and you can't give them the ball back in your own territory. Boogie Basham with the strip, the pressure. Rondell Bothroyd, the recovery for Wake. Newman's got all day back there. Now goes out to his left. He'll pick up what he can and get out of bounds. Will Jamie Newman. Surratt was at the bottom of the screen, the big receiver number 14. He just runs a little curl pattern. He was wide open, but at that point, Newman was looking over to the left side. I was going to say great coverage, but it wasn't great coverage on Surratt. It was good coverage on the other guys. Yeah, no question about it. Will Smith, not much there. Good stop there for the Rice defense. Schumann and company up front. Ekpe is well helping out, brings up a third and medium, about five they'll need to convert here inside a 10 to play in the opening quarter. Wake on top, seven nothing. Could easily be four down territory for Wake Forest. That's something you want to know if you're Wayne Ruggiero with the play call. Newman to the air, crossing pass over the middle, caught by Surratt, took a heavy shot. And a flag comes in from the back of the play at the 14 yard line. Surratt took a huge hit there. And play halted with 9.02 to go. Surratt was the middle of the three receivers, just runs a little dig route. Chamberlain's wrapping him up, and in with the big hit is Thornton, number 18. Tyre Thornton, that one. He tried to put the shoulder in there. He tried. Personal foul, targeting, defense, yep. number 18. 
half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. The previous play is under review. So remember, Ben, the rule has changed this year. It Let's has. take a look at it. Chamberlain has him. In comes Thornton. Hard to see from that angle. Let's take a look at this one. Thornton from the right side. Ooh, that to me looks like targeting. So here's where it's changed. There is no more it stands. The call will either be confirmed or overturned with targeting this year, taking out some gray area to what was in the rule in previous years. Right, and here's the thing too. It's a blank canvas on targeting. They don't need indisputable visual evidence right. to overturn it. They're really just looking for one of two standards, forcible contact with the crown of the helmet or a defenseless player being hit in the head or neck area. And just so everyone out there knows, the crown is everything of the helmet the but the, the face field mask. Is confirmed. It can be Number any part of the helmet. Disqualified. Yeah, that to me looks like targeting. Me too. Here we go, D-Lo, you're up. Here we go, check. And they just, they just affirmed it. Yeah. It was, it was confirmed. You said it, Ben, there's no more stands. Correct. It was confirmed. And honestly, yep. they could have gotten Thornton under both standards. I'm with you I on that. I think he hit him with the crown of the helmet, yep. and I think it was a hit to the head or neck area yeah. of a defenseless player. That's a shame for Thornton, but that's the rule. The rule is in for a reason, and now Rice can even have a tougher time covering these three weight receivers. D'Angelo Ellis checks into the game in place of Thornton. Christian Beal Smith next to Newman. Newman looking to the corner, fires, and it's caught. Sage Surratt, touchdown. Wake Forest, two possessions and two touchdowns. They're just too big. They are too big, too strong. Ellis is in the game. Surratt just runs a stop route, back shoulder throw by Newman. I don't know how you're supposed to stop that. I mean, Surratt's 6'3", 220, only guy ever to be the state player of the year in North Carolina in both football and basketball. I feel bad for Ellis. I don't know what a corner is supposed to do in that situation. Talented young man. Here's Skiba. 57 for 57 in his career doing that. Point after attempts. And Wake Forest, they capitalize on the pressure by Boogie Ross. Started with the fumble. Boogie Basham, one of the best names in college football. And it ends with Newman throwing the ball to a young emerging star in college football. Jamie Newman, Sage Surratt. Remember the names. We're pretty different. The last three bowl games, last three years, they defeated Temple 34-26 in 2016. In 2017, the Belk Bowl. Great win over Texas A&M by three. And last December, they defeated Memphis 37-34 in the Birmingham Bowl. Memphis had a field goal to tie it. It went just a little bit outside to the right. And Dave Clawson's guys made it three consecutive bowl wins for Wake Forest. Tim Duncan is proud somewhere. They've never been to four straight bowl games. Yeah. Not even one of them. They've never been to four right. straight bowl games. In the history of the program. Yeah. So you got to give yep. tremendous credit to Dave Clawson, and it helps when you're bringing guys like Boogie Basham. Boogie. So Wake Forest already with nine plays inside of Rice territory. Rice started out well. Nice pass to Trammell, and then the wheels came off after that. Well, and here's the thing. There is a lot of time left in this football game. If you are Rice, you need to stick to the script. Yes. I know it's 14-0. But they are not a passing team. They are a run the ball down your throat, control the clock team. Aston Walter tries it to the near side, onto about the 30, where he's dragged down by Travion Red. Aston Walter, last week 72 yards in the loss at Army on 18 carries, and he's a little gimpy coming back. Yeah, a little bit. They've got other running backs. I know he wants to stay in the game, but I'd, yeah. I'd rather have him put somebody in that's 100% in that situation. Pick up a five on first down as he remains in the backfield. Green looking to throw. Flings it on far side, and the catch made. And Austin Pete 
You mentioned Sage Surratt on the other side. This young man was quite the basketball player in his high school days, too. Nice grab here. Terrific throw by Green. And Pete got that left foot in before the right foot went out of bounds. He's a leaper. Went up and got it. And that's another nice throw by Green. Second career catch for Young. August Pete had one for a yard last week at Army in that 14-7 loss. Wiley Green over the middle, nearly intercepted by Sternad. So Green dodges a bullet there. There is a penalty flag down at midfield. Such a good run by Sternad. Such a good read. Referee tonight, Jonathan Noli. Lawson now out onto the field. Could this be a number issue? Huddle, huddle, huddle. Hit up a man downfield. Offense. The penalty is declined. Second down. Take a look at two guys on this. You'll see Sternad in the middle of the field. What a great read by him. Yes. And it was actually a legal man downfield by the guy that was about to block Sternad, number 20, 371, Clay Servant. So second down and 10 now for Rice. Walter, good size hole, right side. And Walter keeps those ch legs churning. And he gets a nine yard pickup. That'll put him in a very manageable third and one. This is Rice football right here. Yep. They want to pound you. Watch left side of the screen. Fullback Reagan Williams with a good lead block. Walter gets behind his pads, runs through the tackle of Smenda Jr. That's what they want to be. Their head coach, Mike Bloomgren, came from Stanford. They want a lot of tight ends, a lot of fullbacks, and they want to come right at you. Look at this formation. Third and one. So you got a couple package. tight ends and three backs back there, including a big boy. Two fullbacks in there. And Walter dives over the pile, the mass of humanity, and takes it over the 45 to the 44 for the first down for Rice. Mike Bloomgren, one of the last things he said to us, pound the rock, control the clock, and play great defense is what he wanted tonight. They put the starting left guard, Nick Leverett, in the backfield as a lead fullback, and he jumped over the pile and hit right into 45, the linebacker for Wake Forest, Ryan Smenda. That was amazing. We need to show that again at some point. I have never seen that. <laughs> that was like the fridge, except he didn't have the ball. Leverett is a big, big man. Green taking a shot down the middle of the field, and just out of the reach, he was looking there. For the speedster, August Pete. Watch Nick Leverett, the starting left guard and transfer from North Carolina Central again. One of three on, on that their short line. yardage play. He's right there. Yeah. Watch this. He's going to be the lead fullback. Watch him jump over the pile and get a block. Big Boom. boy. That I mean, that's like my dream. <laughs> <laughs> to be in the backfield to get a, to get to go over the top and get a lead block like that big boy got some ups Aston Walter in the backfield now Wiley Green nice play they've got it in the hands of Rosner and Rosner tripped up but it's into the red zone for the first time tonight for Rice Kobe Davis saved the touchdown a pickup of 40 yards on the pitch and catch for Rice it was a run pass option the left guard Leverett pulled that fooled the Wake Forest Demon Deacons nobody in the middle of the field Rosner runs the slant and Wiley Green is playing well right now the young quarterback redshirt freshman who did start a couple games last year but because of the four game rule maintained a year of eligibility playing extremely well right now Timeout, Rice, their first. It'll be Timeout 30 seconds. taken by Mike Bloomgren and Rice. First and goal upcoming when we resume. 5.33 to play in the opening quarter. Wake Forest with two touchdowns. Their opening possession, they took it 10 plays and 75. Then after a strip of the ball by Boogie Basham and a recovery, they got four plays, 31 yards. It took them just a minute 10 to score their second touchdown. Join our top crew bright and early Sunday morning at 8 Eastern as they get you ready for the first week of the NFL, the 100th season of the NFL. 
Don't miss the unmatched analysis and bold predictions from our football experts on that other pregame show right here on CBS Sports Network. Really impressive drive so far by yeah. Rice, but they, they got to cash in. Got to finish. I mean, they absolutely have to finish yep. here. They weren't able to do it last week. That was one of the things that they talked about. They had to mm -hmm. settle for a couple of field goal attempts, and they missed both of them. Yes. Which 26 is a and major 44 problem. Yards. You know they don't want to put it in Harrison's shoes again. Will Harrison, their place kicker, they're standing by him. So now first and goal here for Rice. Aston Walter, the back next to Wiley Green. He's got two up top, does Green. Going to come near side, though. Going to float it out there. And there's the flag. They were trying to go to Rosner as Amari Henderson was on the coverage there for Wake Forest. A lot of contact there. Both these teams like the fades and back shoulder throws in the corner of the end zone. Pass interference, defense number four. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. So from the two now, Dave Clawson's defense will try and dig in. Here's the penalty, Ross. It looked like they were both kind of doing yeah, some hand yeah. fighting, but because of where Green threw it, at that point, then Henderson's restricting him. Rosner's trying to get over there. Yeah. You know, if that ball's thrown right to them, or even on the other side of Rosner, they don't call that. But Henderson is restricting the movement of Rosner. Here comes our big boy Leverett is in the backfield back again. There he is. Watch big old 55. Deep back is Aston Walter. Walter's got it. Wake was ready that time. Sternad and company, Boogie Basham, number nine in there. And the big boys up front, Dion Bergen Jr. as well. Able to see exactly where that ball was going. Leverett leads. Nice job off the edge. And Rothrock as well got in there. Yeah. So an injured player Turned down. For injury. Shea Baker for Rice. Starts at their right guard position. You said a couple times last week, I, I find myself go watching the game back laughing because you were laughing. He couldn't find anybody to block a couple times last week. He had a very good game. He did. Offensive coordinator Jerry Mack said the biggest difference that they noticed from their line last year to this year was just the guard play. Mm -hmm. Baker started at center last year because of Chafin transferring in from Stanford. He's yep. at right guard. We've already highlighted Leverett, who's at left guard. Yep. Baker will obviously have to come out. The One good play. news is the backup guard, Cole Garcia, started a lot of games last year, number 73. So it's a luxury they did not have a year ago, which is having a guy able to come off the bench yep. that has some playing time. And number 73, Cole Garcia, he's been in these situations before. Rice looking to find the end zone. For the second time this season, they found it once last week at West Point in a 14-7 loss to Army. Walter, the deep back in the eye. Regan Williams in front of him. Walter, they fake it to him. Wiley Green still got it, trying to slither his way in, but the pursuit, too good. Sternad got out there, had some help, but he led the charge. And there's a Rice player slow to get up. Is that Wiley Green? It is Wiley Green. It is. He, he took a, a very Official tough time shot for injury. from Justin Stern at the fifth-year senior linebacker. Let's take a look back. It's a nice job on the edge by Wake. They were ready for it. Good coverage on Jager Bull. Francis comes down the line. Here comes Stern oh. That one to me looked like it was right on top of the head. The hit. Watch Stern at 23 come flying in. Tries to turn his body. And remember, this is not a defenseless player. So this is not targeting because Sternad did not use the crown of his helmet. He came in with his side and shoulder. And Wiley Green is a runner. The ball is tucked away. He is not a defenseless player. Tom Stewart, the backup tonight, if they need him. And Wiley Green's been down now for a, about 60 seconds here in the final five minutes of this opening quarter with Wake Forest on top, their first road game of the season. Leading 14-0. There's Stewart getting some snaps. 
And we'll step aside with 4.44 to go in the opening quarter here in Houston. Rice on the move, down 14-0. It's time for the biggest sale of the year. On right there, the outside linebacker, he initially gets fooled, but then you're going to see the athleticism that he shows. He thinks it's a run to the left and goes there. Watch the redirect by him to come all the way down the line and make this play. Green scores right there if Sternad yep. doesn't run that well. 100%. That is a terrific play by Justin Sterna. Very, very impressive by the fifth-year senior. Certainly some concern there. Wiley Green is Tom Stewart. He's a grad transfer, grad student here at Rice. Came in from the Ivy League and Harvard. They're bringing a cart out onto the field. And Wiley Green, starting quarterback for Rice, down and injured, will step aside as they tend to him and come back to Houston after this. Old Trapper Beefs, fake protein. Wiley Green, the redshirt freshman, starting quarterback out of Plano, Texas, still being tended to. Not much movement out of him at this point. The entire training staff, doctors, and yeah, prayers being said on the sideline. Rice sideline, they're down to a knee. Mike Bloomgren, we saw it last week in his team. The difference, the change, you always hear about the word culture. And there is a different culture here at Rice. Right now, the wins have not showed to this point of the season, but there is clearly a different culture that he has instilled here. And they're hoping their quarterback will be okay. He's got a lot of people around him, Ross, and it's situation you never want to see well there is a standard protocol and procedure anytime there's a potential head or neck injury mm -hmm. so they're going to take every precaution yep with wiley green he's only 19 years old we got a chance to visit with him yesterday yeah. very impressive young man yes was considering some ivy league offers and had a scholarship to Arizona late, but wanted the academics and the yeah. opportunity to play at Rice. And I can just speak from experience on this, Ben. Yeah, what you got? As a former player, this is what you pray about if you pray before games. Yeah. To try to avoid any type of potential serious injury. You can see that the Face care mask. they're taking. Yeah, they're taking it with off. taking his helmet off. Yeah. Saw Justin Sternad there. The middle of your picture there in that wake defense he was the one that delivered that hit they try to take every precaution they can as they should to try to move his head or neck as little as possible but this is the one thing you know playing big time football whether it's division one or in the nfl you know that there's always the possibility of a serious injury yeah and every guy for both teams hopes that everyone on the field that night, that day, that whatever, can avoid something like this. Yeah. You never want to see it, but it's a risk that these men take when they play this great game of college football. They know that. Concern on the look of the Rice players. Dave Clawson up and down the sideline. His... Squad out to a 1-0 start, 38-35 win, nearly 1,200 yards combined in their win last week with Utah State. I think it's important to note, Ben, that just because you see all the people around him mm -hmm. and all the care they're taking, yep. that does not mean it's necessarily a serious injury. Yeah. It just means they're treating it as if it could be Correct. a serious injury. They're yep. taking every precaution to make sure they are as safe as possible with that young man. Training staff of Rice. They've also got some assistance out there from the Wake Forest staff. They're obviously trying to help in any way they can. Green was trying to take it in around that right end. And Justin Sternad, the redshirt senior out of Palm Harbor, Florida, starting his 15th straight game, came over, just made a play. And Green has been 
down now for a good five going on ten minutes. Like they're getting close to trying to get him on there. Talking with him yesterday, he talked about the fact that he had started a couple games. Yeah. And was supposed to start against LSU. Mm -hmm. But the coaches came to him and said, hey, we'd like to save another year for you. We'd yep. like to save your eligibility. And with the new redshirt rule in college football, you can play in four games as a freshman. Correct. And store any year and still redshirt. So they said rather than playing these next two games we'd rather have you for 12 or maybe 13 games in a bowl game mm -hmm. in a few years and he said it was the best scenario he could have imagined got the chance to play got a chance to get some confidence in himself really he was lightly recruited in high school because he broke his foot as a junior he did so he didn't get have any tape till his senior year at Prestonwood Christian Academy. His mom coming out now there. Again, as a senior, he came back in the state title game. His team was down 18 points. They came away with a 42-41 win. He's from a family full of athletes. His father, Dave Clausen's taken a knee. Neither side wants to see this ever happen. Green's father, friends with Andrew Luck's father. In fact, they used to, they hung out back in the day. Right, where they both do some work with the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Wake sideline, they're concerned as well. It was interesting because we asked Wiley Green about Andrew Luck retiring. Yeah. He said, yeah, that that kind of stunk. You know, he, he <laughs> wanted to see more of Luck this year. He's mm -hmm. seen tape of Luck running this Rice offense because Andrew Luck was with Bloomgren. Mike Bloomgren, the head coach at Stanford. He looks up to luck, but he also understands why he did it. Concern on both sidelines as they continue to tend to Wiley Green, Rice's starting quarterback. The one thing, too, that stands out to me, at least, Ben, talking with him yesterday, mm -hmm. just how young he looks. He looked like he was 16. 19 years old, <laughs> but... I mean, really youthful. And really, yes. we met with him and on Antonio Montero yeah. for Rice, who's also 19, yeah. also in his second year in the program. And those guys just looked a lot younger yeah. than the guys we work, we met with from Wake. Yeah. Jamie Newman, the quarterback, who's a redshirt junior, and yeah. Justin Sternad. I mean, it, it was the difference between 19-year-old guys and 22-, yeah. 23-year-old men. Saw Wiley Green was talking. You hear the fans showing their appreciation. Green's parents down on the field there. They came out. And in these situations, take me back to your playing days. When you see something like this, what is it like first for the team? You've been on both sides? I guess I should ask you that I, first. I, I have, and I, I can tell you a couple of things. Number one, you're mind starts to go a lot of different places I bet you know yeah. you you really start thinking about you know the risk that you're taking out there and then what I always thought was the weirdest thing Ben is the that? first play afterwards it just kind of feels like slow motion it doesn't feel like everybody's going full speed mm -hmm. and then the second play after an incident like this it's like it never even happened yeah the first play is weird you don't really feel like you're going full speed and then a play after that it's like everything's back to normal I don't know how or why but that's that's at least the experience that I had I can remember 2004 playing against the Patriots for the Buffalo Bills they actually brought the ambulance on the field for big Mike Williams wow. from Texas and this is the loudest cheer we've, we've yeah. heard so far tonight no question about it so they'll take Wiley Green Back to evaluate him. Tom Stewart will come into the game as Rice's quarterback. The grad transfer who's from, from Dallas wanted to come back to his home state after playing at Harvard. Nine games played last year and threw for 1,600 yards plus 14 touchdown passes as well. And did a really nice job as well the year before in 2017. 
when he was honorable mention all Ivy 14 touchdowns yeah two interceptions so he's been in games he's been in big games probably not as mobile as Wiley Green but he's got big time arm talent does Stewart so Wiley Green back they've taken him back to evaluate him we get word on him we'll give it to you the second we have it Stewart first play hands off Aston Walter touchdown Rice and the Owls are on the board with a one yard plunge into the end zone over the pile for Aston Walter and it's 14 6 now with 432 to play in the quarter. It's just ISO with the fullback Leverett jumping yeah. over, and then here comes Walter. As most people watching know, all you have to do is get the tip of the ball across the plane of the goal line. Very difficult to tell a lot of times in those situations because it's a mass of humanity in there. So here's Will Harrison. Last week, two missed field goals. Look good on that. And it's a 14-7 game. 10 plays, 75 yards, took 407 as Rice gets on the board against Wake Forest to cut the deficit in half. Two to play in the opening quarter. Wake Forest on top by a touchdown. Aston Walter capping a 10 play, 75 yard drive. 407 goes up and over the top. This after their starting quarterback, the very next play after their starting quarterback, Wiley Green, was carted off the field after a Heavy hit delivered by Justin Sternad, the linebacker for Wake Forest. So the first drive for Rice, four plays and a fumble for five yards. They come back here and do what they want to do, right? Well, that was gigantic for Rice as it relates to having a chance in this ball game. But I got to be honest with you, Ben. You know, part of me, I, I, part of my brain is still thinking about Wiley Green. Yeah. And hoping we get an update and hoping he's okay. And I got to think a lot of the players are the same way. No question. Fair catch called for by Christian Beal Smith. Hello, Newman. Here's what he's done so far tonight, Ross. Well, he hasn't had a bad throw yet. No. I mean, ever since he took over for Wake Forest last year, they have really been on fire offensively. It helps when you have gigantic receivers like yes. Scotty Washington and Sage Surratt. This is the most talented team Wake Forest has had in a while. So many fifth-year seniors, so much experience. McGinn, the left guard, is really the only first-time player. Look at this set at the bottom of the screen. What do they do here? Newman kept it. Montero got in the backfield. Beal Smith took the football. I love listening to you talk yesterday about the way that they do they being Wake with the mesh point, the delay in that is very unique. It, it's it's as slow to the hole as any college football team I think I've ever seen. They're so patient. Newman, he's patient, dumps it off over the middle at the 30. The catch is made by Sage Surratt. And it's going to set up a third and short for Wake. Surratt, top of the screen. And this is what you do, by the way when you have big receivers. You run a lot of in-breaking routes because their body is so big, it's hard for the defender to get in there and make a play. Newman comes out at warp speed. This offense moves. Sage Surratt, like he wanted a face mask there, did not get it. Fourth down, incomplete, is fourth and three. And the punt group will come on for Dave Clawson. First poor throw of the night yeah. by Newman right at the opportune time for Rice. It's third down. He grounded that ball. Rice gets a three and out. They get the ball right back. You know, after that 14 nothing start, you thought there was a chance that Rice might get run out of the building, like what happened a year ago. But the Owls now get the ball back with a chance to tie this thing. So Dom Maggio on to boot it away. Last week averaged 42.6 a punt. Senior out of Maryland, Austin Trammell takes it 26 yard line. Trammell. Makes a move, got some blocks, no flags down. Trammell inside of Wake Forest territory to the 40-yard line. Austin Trammell, the big punt return to set him up, 34-yard gain. He's the emotional leader. He's a captain as a true junior, very well blocked. Trammell really only made one cut, then turned the Jets on. Nice job by Francis actually getting off a block down the field for Wake and making that tackle. Otherwise, Trammell might have had a house call. He might have. 
Rice right back in business. Here's the deal. A lot of times after a big play like that, you like to go deep. Do they do that with Stewart's first throw, though? Tom Stewart, there is the first set throw, and he finds one of the tight ends, Jordan Myers. So let's go back to pregame a few minutes before. This is Austin Trammell in the middle getting his guys fired up, Tucker. Watch this. A standing backflip. Stuck the landing. With a helmet and shoulder pads on. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how guys do that That's ever. That's awesome. Let alone with a helmet and shoulder pads. That shows you how much juice he's got in his lower body. And look, look at Rice. They go right from the spread yep. to now they have 23 personnel. That's two backs, yep. three tight ends. Deep back is Ellerby. Nashawn Ellerby had a 54-yard jaunt to the end zone last week against Army and over 100 yards. Isang Bassey made the tackle on him. And a decent pickup there on first down for Ellerby. By the way, I know you know this, Ben. But if you ever hear anyone, as you watch Ellerby finish the run, yeah. if you ever hear anyone say 12 personnel or, like I just said, 23 personnel, all you need to know is the first number yep. is how many running backs are in the game. Yep. The second number is how many tight ends are in the game. And everybody else is a receiver. Right. And it always adds up to five. So that's all you need to know. I spent a year with Tom Bradley in the broadcast booth. I was well educated on that about seven years ago. Former defensive coordinator, now the Pittsburgh Steelers of Penn State. There's a throw down field. Double covered. And that is Austin Pete, his third catch of the night. 16 yard pickup. What a strike by Stewart. Big Tom. Steps into it and puts some zip on that ball. Well, wow, that was a heck of a throw. That cannot be easy to come off a bench. I did it a bunch in the NFL. It's not enjoyable to have to come off the bench cold into a game like that. Usually takes a little bit of time to get into a rhythm. I think Stewart's in it. Seems to be. LRB to his right. Stewart's going to keep it. Stewart got a block. Stewart turns to dive in. They say touchdown. is a point away from tying this thing up. He's not as athletic as Green, and so Wake wasn't expecting it. And you said it exactly right. What a job by Rosner. Man, as a former offensive lineman, I love receivers <laughs> that block downfield. Good eyes, Ben. Number two, Rosner blocking downfield. That's how you get big runs. That's how you get touchdowns yep. when your receivers buy in. So there's Stewart with Charlie Booker, who also came here as a grad transfer from Harvard. And Mike Bloomberg told us, he's told us both times we've talked to him, is, I'll finish that when you go through this. Yeah, right side of the screen. Watch Rosner, number two. This is the fake. And then the right side of the screen, Rosner right there, number two. Finishing the block on Jasir Taylor. Yep. Harrison on to try to even the score up in this contest, and he does. We are tied at 14 apiece. Lundgren said about Stewart, he said, you know what? It wasn't that he wasn't good enough. They felt better with Wiley Green leading their system. Two guys to keep an eye on, Boogie Basham and Rosner at the top. Boogie Basham, the D-end, totally fooled by this zone read. He just goes for yeah. the running back, the right read, and then at the top, Rosner finishing the block. Beautiful. So well done, especially when you're in space like that, to keep your hands inside. That was a long, sustained block. He didn't put his hands outside or get a holding penalty. Such a nice job by Rosner. And quite frankly, yep. if you're playing a Mike Bloomgren's offense as a receiver, you better block or you're not playing. And Brad Rosner just showed That's he right. is a finisher. So Tom Stewart caps off a four-play, 40-yard drive, took two minutes, and it was all set up by the big punt return from Austin Trammell. Near side, it'll be Christian Beal Smith letting that one go into the end zone. Well, we've got an opportunity to step up with Werner Ladder and help football coaches find a cure for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Visit coachtocuremd.org. Nighttime settling in here in Houston, Texas with Ross Tucker. My name is Ben Holden. All of our hardworking crew and 
All those out in the heat, tip of the cap to them. We said, it like, yeah, we said it last week, Ben. Yeah. This is a new Rice team it is. this year, and it they is. are proving that again. Here goes Wake. Back to work, right up the gut. Just shy of the 30-yard line was Beal Smith. Montero and Nyaqual on the stop. The field temp down to about 104, it looks like there. Still a hot one. The average high this time of year here in Houston, 86. Settle in. The sun been down for a while. Nice evening here at Rice Stadium. Feels okay. A great to, game. Yeah, feels okay to me as long as I have both those fans pointed right on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I second the motion, my friend. Another third down. Third and two. Beal Smith. He'll be in the backfield. You got to expect some type of run pass option here, Ben. Wouldn't be surprised if Newman puts it in the hand, in the, the belly of Beal Smith, and then makes a decision. Third and two now. Instead, he's going to fire it out far side. Surratt's got it. Surratt's got it out across the 45-yard line. Does Sage Surratt continuing to pile up the yardage? George Nyakwal made the stop once again. Watch Beal Smith. Or you're going to see first Surratt at the top of the screen. I mean, he's just so big and physical. That's barely even a route right there. Yep. Kind of run a couple yards and use your body to Newman push off a little over bit. the middle. He left that ball in that mesh point for an awful long time there. And then Kendall Hinton gets it down to the 25 yard line. See if they run another play or not. It looks like they're going to opt to let it wind down here. 27 yard pickup there. So we played 15 minutes here, Ross. 14 apiece. That's the end of the first quarter. Wake jumped out to a 14-0 lead. But the Rice Owls, they storm back here in their home opener here in 2019. And after one, it's 14 all. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. by Corona Premier last week with a minute eight left. Wake Forest QB Jamie, New Jamie Newman found Kendall Hinton in the end zone for the game-winning TD against Utah State. Hinton, a converted quarterback, is our player profile brought to us by Corona, and there are the particulars on him. He's got eight passing touchdowns, 12 rushing touchdowns, and one receiving touchdown. And watching Dave Clawson on Tuesday at his press conference, he said he is one guy that is clearly invested. Well, he scored a touchdown in five different seasons. Correct. The first player to ever do that. Yep. And I love the fact that they got three six foot three or taller receivers, and on fourth and two to win the game, they threw it to the five yeah. nine guy in double coverage. <laughs> that is Ross Tucker. My name is Ben Holden. Great to have you with us here on a Friday night. Bill Thayer, our producer, Michael Frank, our director, Tom Wicks, our AD here tonight. Into the air, into the air, it goes to Washington, and you just said it, Ross. Those big, tall receivers, and Scotty Washington goes up and over, six foot one. Andrew Bird, no chance, touchdown, Wake. Well, looking at these kids on the field before the game, and look how long his arms are. Yeah. I mean, these guys are monsters. I'm not saying they are NFL receivers, although I think they'll get a chance, but they look like NFL receivers. Just watch him go up and high point the ball. I mean, I, I don't know what you want Bird to do. He's 15, number 15. He's a freshman. Yep. He put his hand up there. I mean, he's doing everything he can. That's why size matters. Big people usually beat up smaller people. Usually. Point after good. And Scotty Washington, one more look at it. I mean, look, Bird even puts his left hand in there, yep. tries to rake through. That's one in the NFL. Ben, you just say, well, those guys get paid, too. You just kind of tip your cap right, right. and say, those guys are pros. They get paid, too. And I guess in college, you say, those guys are on scholarship, too. And that's what an ACC receiver looks like, yep. whose team is probably going to go to a fourth straight bowl game. Five plays, 75 yards, 25-yard touchdown reception by Scotty Washington to cap the 75-yard drive again. Warp speed, a minute 36. Second touchdown of the season for Washington. He had one in the second quarter last week. 
Made it 17-14 wake at that point of the game. He also had three bad drops he last did. week. So he has come back from those drops against Utah State. The reality, though, Ben, is Rice needs their defense to play better than this. You know, they need this to be a lower scoring game yeah. to have a chance to win it. They only gave up 14 points to Army all week, but this is a totally different animal they're going against tonight. Skiba boots it away. Austin Trammell, fair catch called for. Right near the goal line. And the offense comes on the field. We'll let you know tomorrow, starting at noon Eastern, CBS Sports Network brings you a full day of college football, and it's highlighted by a showdown in the Sunshine State. Number 18, UCF, takes on FAU. 7 Eastern kicking that one only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And UCF, what do they do at quarterback, Ross? What do you think, man? Well, they play both of them. Both guys were productive a week ago. Wimbush, the Notre Dame transfer, Dylan Gabriel, both those guys oh, yeah. filling in for Mackenzie Milton. UCF just keeps rolling. See if Lane Kiffin and his guys have an answer in that one tomorrow at 7. Rice first and 10 from the 25. Tom Stewart and at quarterback just joining us. Wiley Green, the redshirt freshman, their starter, carted off the field. Back in the first quarter, late in the first quarter, the possessions for Rice, well, didn't start good, but since then, Ross, it's been very good. Right, and, and this is already more points than they scored all week last week yeah. against Army. Tom Stewart, the backup quarterback, is now in the game. What a luxury it is with the whole transfer portal, yeah. grad transfer, to have a backup quarterback who's got a lot of experience, although this is his first FBS action ever. He played at FCS Harvard. Yeah. Turns and hands off Aston Walter. Burrowed his way through there, down low to the ground. I beg your pardon, that was Montgomery, not Walter. They said Montgomery has legit, legit speed. And they wanted to try to get him some touches this week. Arguably their best running back, Juma Odoviano, yes. is still out and will be for a few weeks. Yep. I jokingly said to Mike Bloomgren, I said that Montgomery, Cameron Montgomery, is not related to Ty, is he? <laughs> Who he had at Stanford. Right. <laughs> he said no. Good player, but not related. Third and one. Third and a yard here. Big play for Rice. They got my big guy. Leverett. Leverett is in the backfield again. Why not? Use him. Follow 5-5. Five, five. Up and... Based on the spot, he should have it. It was Aston Walter who took it up and over, but there's a penalty marker down. So we'll have to check that. It's at the 33-yard line near side Outside, of the field. Outside, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Number 17, five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. Well, they definitely got it now as Travion Red was offsides. You can see that right there, Travion Red, number 17, pretty clearly. You cannot be touching the football. What happens in those short yardage situations is you're trying to get as close as you possibly can, but he pretty clearly lined up offsides. So Red is starting at their rover spot. Luke Masterson, who normally starts at it, has slid back to play in the safety spot due to the first half suspension of Nasir Green, who got a target in the second half last week. He's eligible to return in the third quarter. Stewart would like to have that one back, looking for a guy on my all-name team, Jager Bull, who can come up with a grab second and 10. That's got to be scary as a quarterback when you run a bootleg and the defensive end doesn't buy it at all and is right in your face, especially when he's 6'5", 275. Boogie Basham there. Second and 10 from the 39. I mean, we got Boogie, Basham, and Jager Bull on the same play there. They're on the all-name team, both of them. Quick hit here. This is Walter. Walter wrapped up by Smenda. Good-looking football player is Smenda. He is all over the field most nights for Wake Forest. And Walter's hobbling a bit. Smenda had a career-high seven tackles last week. Gets off the block, runs down the line. Pretty nice stiff arm, yeah. actually, by Walter but Smenda able to get just enough to get him down. Third and manageable yep. Six for needed. Rice. We'll see whether or not Wake brings the heat or whether or not they think their front four can get there. 
Rice taking a lot of time right now. They're going to have to call timeout. Tom Stewart looking to the sidelines, not sure exactly which number he's supposed to run. And yep, they are. As you Time said, Ross, Rice. The time They're off second. Got it will be 30 seconds. One left. In talking with the coaches, it was interesting. You know, Stewart, as a grad transfer, trying to learn a whole new offense, and they've got a lot of offense in. They've got all the Stanford multiple running backs, multiple tight end stuff, but then they also have all the RPO stuff that Jerry Mack, the OC, brought with him from North Carolina Central. And I think the biggest reason why Wiley Green won the starting job is he just handled all the play calls, all the audibles better than Stewart did. Yeah. And, you know, they said Stewart has a package of plays that he's comfortable with, but I didn't notice Wiley Green having a wristband or looking down at a wristband. Right. But right. it's clear that Stewart has a package that he knows and has to look down. I don't think he could find the play <laughs> on the play before. He looked over like, I, I don't see it. What number are you calling? It's like being a catcher in baseball. Here's Stewart now on third and six. Pressure comes, and they get him. And they get him back at the 32-yard line. Basham and company were in there. Ja'Cory Johns off the end as well. They brought pressure from this side. Watch these guys right side of your screen. They're going to come. In comes Ja'Cory Johns. Gooseberry tries to pass it off. He's got to stay with him. Number 76, Justin Gooseberry, the right tackle. Watch the right side of your screen. Gooseberry lets him go because he thinks he's supposed to block somebody else. He was the defensive end on the play. Gooseberry, 76, has to stay with Johns. Surratt's back awaiting the punt. Makes the catch on the move. A couple of nifty moves up the sideline and a decent return onto about the 35-yard line off the punt of Adam Nunez, who last week put three inside the five. Not this time. Wake Forest has it when we come back up by seven. Our last slide there about co-signing. Oh, yeah. I think Alabama wants to play him to get rid of that Rice. He's like, nah. Nick doesn't want the, uh, he wants a blemish on their, on the right side of their win-loss column. Here's Newman, keeps it. Jamie Newman ducks down. Good pick up there. And that'll set up a short conversion attempt next play. Their possessions, Ross. Very impressive. I mean, there's a reason why. They've had back-to-back -back best offenses in school history, and I wouldn't be surprised if this year they're right there with the last two years. Clawson's really done a nice job. I mean, for so long, let's be honest, Wake Forest is kind of a laughing stock. Yeah. And nobody really took them seriously. Now they're beating NC State. They're beating Duke. They got a huge game next Friday against the Tar Heels at home. Yeah. But they insisted to us they were not overlooking Rice, and it's a good thing because Rice came to play. Kenneth Walker, the freshman, they told us yesterday they wanted to get him some run. In fact, Dave Clawson said after last week's win they wanted to get him some run. Stop made by Montero and Prudy Calderon for Rice. So he's going to get that run here, obviously. And he's probably going to get quite a few more runs without Cade Carney in their lineup tonight. Stays in the game. Newman keeps here. And Newman's going to set up a short down situation on third down, third and a yard coming up. Sean Chamberlain made the tackle. Third down and one. Five minutes gone here in the second quarter. Wake Forest, that's Walker, and they get some push there, Ross. They pushed him all the way to the 36-yard line. Good Boy, work by the big boys. He is a true freshman. Watch yep. the power that Walker has. It was not that well blocked. Well, she gets hit the line. He just plows through and wakes on the move again. This is how they roll. Back out live, down the middle, right down the middle of the field. A strike delivered to Jack Frudenthal, former walk-on, now turned captain. Antonio Montero's the guy that got beat there, number one. He stepped up because of the fake to Walker injury. and was late then to get back to Frudenthal. And Trey Schumann slow to get up, needing some attention for Rice. 34-yard pickup on the pitch and catch from Newman to Jack Frudenthal, who last week had a career-high four catches. This is why RPOs are so effective. Watch number one, left side of your screen, Montero. He stepped up first. 
because of the fake to Walker. Yep. So by the time they go to throw it, he's a step and a half late to get to Frudenthal. He told us yesterday, <laughs> it's such a hard offense to go to against because you got to be ready for the run and the pass. When Newman puts the ball in the belly of Walker, you got to take a step forward. Otherwise, you're going to be late on the run up the middle. Mm -hmm. But then if he pulls it, you're a step late for the tight end going down the seam. That's the guy they're putting in a bind, and it worked perfectly. It certainly did there. Look there at Frudenthal. Redshirt senior out of Richmond, Virginia. Now first and goal here for Wake Forest. Leading by seven. Kenneth Walker's back in at running back next to Newman. So behind him here, a little offset to it. Switching sides there, a lot of times that means it's a pass. Newman, it's a pass to the near side. Flag down, they go to Frudenthal. Check the marker first. Usually that's offensive pass interference and a pick by the outside receiver when you see two flags come in on an outbreaking route on the goal line. Our referee tonight, Jonathan Noli. Get the verdict from him here. Pass interference offense, number seven, 15 yard penalty, replay first down. Scotty Washington. Take a look at Scotty Washington yep. out there. He's going to run an in breaking route here, and he's going to pick the guy that's man to man on Frudenthal right here. Yep, right there. You can run your route, but you can't clearly try to get in the way of the defender. It was pretty obvious there that Scotty Washington was not running a route to try to catch the football, but instead trying to impede the progress of that defender. And by the way, just as a side bend, yeah. I knew it was a pass because you know how he switched the running back yeah. sides? Yep. You're usually not doing that if it's a run. You're usually switching the side of the running back for pass protection purposes. Yep. Here's Newman. Near side again, throw on the mark, and this one's reeled in by Scotty Washington. They get him down, Ellis did, down at the 11-yard line. Once again, Newman just throwing the ball to one of his big-bodied receivers. So hard to defend these guys. Out of the gun. Newman stands in over the middle, caught inside of the five. Calderon on the tackle there. Steven Claude, who last week had six grabs, coming in, he had seven in his career. He had a big game last week, too. How about having a fourth receiver that's 6'2 two and a half, 215 like that? Not bad. He's, he's the run of the litter. Surratt went in motion. They're going to go to him. Sage Surratt. They're going to get him, though. Great work on the defensive end there. Outstanding work. Watch Surratt come in motion. He bubbles, ghost motion, they throw it to him. Outside in by Bird, the tackler, grabs the leg and holds on. It's a really nice job by Andrew Bird. He's Back. been good, even when he got beat for the touchdown. Yep. He couldn't have had better coverage. Back into the game after having to leave in the opening quarter. And here is Nick Skibel trying a 26-yard attempt. 20 for 23 in his career was the fourth most accurate freshman in the nation a year ago. They're trying to make it a 10-point game. And he does just that. So Wake held out of the end zone, but they get points, Ross, and they lead it now 24 to 14 here in Houston, Texas, nearly halfway through the second quarter. They're gonna want you to do it next time when Brown's here. Old Trapper Beefs, tough. On the 26-yard field goal by Skiba. 10 plays, 55 yards, 326 it took off the clock. Thought they had a touchdown from one of their captains there, Jack Frudenthal there, but penalty called on Wake Forest on that play. What a great story Frudenthal is. Tremendous. I mean, walked on yep. as a wide receiver, 6'3", 195 pounds. Yeah. And now he's built up his body and switched positions to the point where he's a senior captain, 6'3", 235. That's kind of the way you have to do it mm -hmm. when you are at Wake. You're, you're not going to recruit the same athletes that are at Clemson and some of the other teams in the ACC. You got to evaluate better, and you have to develop better. They redshirt almost everybody. A lot of fourth and fifth year guys. A ton of them. Experienced, tough, smart football players. 
Here, number six for Dave Clawson. Trammell calls the fair catch. They'll have it from the 25. 7.48 to play until halftime here. Wake Forest last week, 105 plays. Rice just 44. And that's what the Demon Deacons have done here in this quarter. 95 to 3. The yardage to this point as Stewart brings them back onto the field here. Rice has to get back to their roots of running the football. I know Stewart has made some nice throws, but I just don't think that they can major in that. They need to lean on that offensive line with the three fifth-year grad transfers and try to possess the football and knock Wake Forest back. Cameron Montgomery is the deep back. They give it off to Regan Williams. The grad transfer from Stanford. He pulls his way forward for about six. The lock's flowing. He looks like a fullback, doesn't he? Going right back on the football. Well, they back off. Maybe not. <laughs> Product of Jackson, Ohio, is Williams. Fullbacks don't get the ball that often. Look at him just driving his feet. And he spins a little bit. You don't see very many fullbacks get the ball in college football in the NFL anymore. It's almost an ex extinct position. Yeah. yeah. Detroit Lions have Nick Bauden, former San Diego Stater. Played in the Rashad Penny years as Cameron Montgomery gets the carry here. Third down upcoming for Tom Stewart. The Harvard grad transfer came into the game late in the opening quarter when starter Wiley Green was injured. Take a look at Masterson, number 12. He splits two blocks to make the play. Wow, that's impressive. Guy that plays everywhere for this Wake defense. You said earlier he's playing safety tonight, yep. at least in the first half, because mm -hmm. Nasir Green is out with the targeting, but he split two offensive linemen there to make the play. Otherwise, that would have been first down yardage for the Owls. Versatile guys, played safety, linebacker all over the place. Wozner had it, took his eyes off it, and dropped it. Fourth and three now. They'll have to bring the punt team on, Will Rice. Got to make the layups there. Yep. They had a heavy set. They saw that. Rosner was man-to-man. -man. They wanted to get the ball in the perimeter right away, give Rosner a chance to make a guy miss or power through to get the first down. They missed a couple of those against Army last week, too. That's got to be an easy completion. So here's Nunez on. Another one Time of those Wake Forest, nice Wake Forest. grad transfers. It will be 30 seconds. TCU kicked in 40 straight games there. He was pinpoint accurate last week. Timeout's been taken by Wake Forest. They've got two left, Rice with one. Which is interesting, by the way, right? I mean, six minutes left in the second quarter yeah. for Wake to take a timeout before a punt return? That is odd. I, I don't know if they're worried about a potential fake here or what, but that's, a, that's a curious timeout by Dave Clawson. Maybe they just weren't lined up the way he wanted them to be. He is keeping his defense on the field. Yep. Other than the returner, Surratt, yes. the starting defense is out there. He's not taking any chances with a Rice team trying to pull off an upset. This is called defense stay, which is pretty self-explanatory. Hey, defense, stay on the field in case it's a fake. Nunez. Fair catch taken and made by Sage Surratt. Inside of the 30. First and 10 for the 29, and we come back for Jamie Newman and the Wake Forest offense. A fan cam to see how the fans are reacting here tonight at Rice Stadium. 70th year of this venue. It's hosted a Super Bowl, Super Bowl VIII. JFK with a famous speech back in his day in this very venue. And Rice trying to get their first win of the season, even their record at 1-1. One and one. Meanwhile, Wake and Jamie Newman, who's missed on one for 181 and two scores to this point. We'll start from the 29 here. He's a stud. You guys are killing me, by the way. Who? Between Chick-fil-A and Corona, it's a Friday night. What are you, I'm hungry a, and thirsty? I'm at a football game. <laughs> I can smell like some pulled pork up here in the press box. Killing me, killing well, me, guys. Houston. Newman fires, caught by Washington, he gets over the 40. He did drop it, yeah. Dropped it near the 40-yard line. Had three of those last week. So when you think about Jamie, look, that's a perfect pass. It is. He had three last week, and they said at times 
he has confidence issues. So you think about Newman's numbers last week and the night, they should be even better. Newman keeps it. Plows forward onto the 34. First time tonight we've called another guy on the all-name team, Blaze Aldridge. Yes. Makes the stop. His middle name, by the way, is Achille. Well, he read that very well. Bounced off an offensive lineman. Brings up a third down here. Look for one of the big receivers. They go quick. Newman stands in, flings it, overthrows Sage Surratt. And it's fourth and five for Wake Forest. Really the first time they were able to get pressure. Watch number one, Montero, right there. They run a stunt. He comes around. He gets cut down by the back, but still able to get back up and affect Newman's legs as he tries to step into the throw. That's why the ball went high. It's a nice job by Beal Smith, the running back, with the pass pro, but Montero, relentless, able to affect the throw. The second three and out for Wake Forest here tonight. Maggio steps into it, bangs it down. Fair catch called for by Austin Trammell inside of his 20. Five and a half to play until the half. Rice will look to get back into this game. Down by 10, it's their football. Tom Stewart leading the charge, and we come back. Georgia State looked like the better they team did. and dominated the action. They did. Headlines from week one is Sean Ellerby's checked in at running back. Chase Monroe, the first one to get to him. Linebacker for Wake Forest. Ellerby last week over 100 yards. Had to come back from a couple of issues with his knee. It's been a long road back. They weren't expecting him back until, what, week five? After they played Baylor. Tore his ACL at the end of 17 and just never yeah. really able to come back. Last year had to have another operation on the knee and is far ahead of what the medical experts thought he'd be at this point. Loss of a yard on that run by him. Aston Walter snares it with one hand, breaks a tackle of Smenda, and he's forced out by Sternand there. Then it'll bring up a third down and manageable here for Tom Stewart and Rice. So this is the matchup you want. Really, every level of football, if you can get an athletic running back on a middle linebacker like Smenda, that's what you want. Watch Smenda. He's a bigger guy trying to catch Walter. What a catch by Walter. That yeah, was. was a one-handed catch. Yeah. But that greatly favors the offense. Because a lot of these running backs these days, Ben, they're basically slot receiver types, and the linebackers just can't keep up with them. Rice, two of five on third down. They need six here to convert. Stewart to the air. He's got his man, Trammell. First down, Rice. Austin Trammell, Mr. Consistency. Mike Bloomgren calls him, and that's a pickup of 13. They really like Trammell on those inside release slants. He did that once last week against Army. He really looks like he's shot out of a cannon when he runs those inside slants. If Stewart put a better ball on him, I think he might have been able to run for a while. Yeah. He did it last week at Army. The play you mentioned, a 38-yard pickup for him at the time. 114 yards passing for Rice. They had just 62 last week. Stewart. And that one should have been intercepted by Masterson. There's a flag down at the 44-yard line. There's no foul for pass interference. The ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Second down. So there's the word from Jonathan Noli, our referee here tonight. So mark my words on this, Ben. Luke Masterson, number 12. Yeah. He's going to get a chance at the next level. Jumps up, gets two hands on it. He has played the rover, yeah. which is the outside linebacker spot, mm -hmm. typically to the field. He's played safety. He's 6'2", 220. They put him at a bunch of different spots, but that's what they want in the NFL. They want safety types that are big enough to play linebacker. Product of Naples, Florida. Good tackle there. Yanked down by Isang Bassi was Walter. You know who I else think you can put in that category. You're the expert on this, but Ryan Smenda. Smenda as well is a good player. I, I think Sternad yeah, is, I'm with is, you a, on that is, too. is a pro. Sternad yeah. can really run. Yep. 
Spender's a younger guy and a bigger guy. He's going to have to prove he can cover. Yeah. But Sternad and Masterson can both really cover. None of these guys weigh 240. I mean, those days are over. Yep. The days really of even having three linebackers on the field a lot are pretty much over, unless you're playing against a team like Rice. Third and three for the Owls. Stewart to the air, swings it out, catch made by Jordan Myers, and Myers works his magic and gets the first down for the Owls inside a three to play until halftime. Terrific job by Stewart getting the ball out of his hands quickly and not letting Basham get a hand on it. Myers got right up field, pretty good block downfield from Pete. Look at this, he knew exactly where the sticks were. Beautiful. And dove for it. Fresh set of downs here. 10 first downs for Rice. One less than their opponent here tonight. Regan Williams. Plowing ahead. He's just powering behind that line, Ross Tucker. I know you got to like that. Well, I just love the way Rice plays. I mean, last week for me, Rice against Army, that's like, <laughs> that's as good as it gets. You got the option versus a team that has a million tight ends and fullbacks. Yep. You know, talking with Bloomgren, Mike Bloomgren, the head coach yesterday, he said that they got absolutely dominated up front by Wake Forest a year ago on yeah. both sides of the ball. That's not happening. I mean, they're losing not by 10, year. but they are not getting dominated up front at all. They're a year older, yeah. and the three grad transfers have really helped. Second and five now. Pitch there into the hands of Cameron Montgomery, and Montgomery showing some speed. And Montgomery moves the chains again. Sternad forced him out of bounds. All the flow was going to the defense's right. This is basically a counter in my mind. All the flow going defense's right. Pitch it back. Masterson's. Halftime interview. Too late to get back out there. And that is more than just the yardage they got. That should slow down the guys on the back side of the defense at least a little bit, knowing, okay, even though flow goes away, they could be coming back my way. Pickup of eight on the play for number eight, Cameron Montgomery, who stays in the game. Stewart, pressure coming, steps into the pocket, can't get away, and they get him. Good pressure there. That was Travion Red who was coming on him really hard around the corner, got all over him and dragged him down. And Stewart gets up a little bit gimpy there. It's the last thing Rice would need at this that point. That was a delayed blitz. You can't even see 17 Red. He's over here somewhere. Watch. He'll come flying in from distance. Yep. That is a delayed blitz. Stewart's got to feel that and get rid of it. Yep. I think more teams should do delayed blitzes because the offensive line doesn't account for it. Pitch and catch. That is Jordan Myers with a grab. You know, if we can't even see him on the replay, right, the offensive line, they only block their blitz responsibilities typically if the guy comes right now. Right. So I like the idea of a hesitation blitz, a delay blitz. Just give it a beat and then have a guy that can run like Red come. He's going to come scot-free because the offensive linemen check their linebacker responsibility and then help the D-line. Oh, yeah, well, it's third and eight here, Ross. Ball at the 38-yard line. Is this four-down territory? It is. They, would, they would not attempt a field goal from here, so they can call this play knowing they're probably going to go for it. And it's knocked down. Boogie Basham. Knock that one down, brings up fourth and eight. Terrific job, Boogie Basham, top of the screen, had the strip sack earlier. He'll watch Stewart set up, and he knows right there, he knows it's going to be a quick three step. Yep. Gets a hand up. So much of this game is just being smart. As soon as he saw Stewart set up like that, I'm not going to get there for a sack. Stop, yep. get my hands up. Kind of thought Rice might run it there to try to force Wake to at least use a timeout, maybe go for it on fourth down. So Nunez, who last week put three inside of the five, trying to do it again. Don't pick it up, don't pick it up. And he did it again. Wow. Pinpoint accuracy from the TCU transfer. Now four punts this season inside of the opposition's five-yard line. 41 seconds remaining. Wake Forest with a football, two timeouts, and a 10-point lead. Really curious to see how Dave Clawson and the offense elect to play this. Yeah, me too. I mean, they're one of the fastest teams in college football, fourth fastest. 
in terms of how quickly they get the ball off. Less than 20 seconds between each snap. Third most plays in all of college football a year ago. So they're built for speed, but they also have a 10 point lead and they're backed way yeah. up. And I think Clawson doesn't want to take any chances. This is a risk reward ratio that does not work out for the Demon Deacons. This is the right move in my mind by Clawson and Wake Forest. With you on that. I would say to your point about how fast they are, they are from the state of North Carolina. You know, where NASCAR is king. You ever do that? I've covered NASCAR. No, but you ever been in a car? I've driven one at MIS, Michigan I, I, International. I, I drove one at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Nice. That, wow, man. It's quite an experience. Yes, it is. I got black flag. I thought I was going into the wall. I was going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I did. They had, they had my wife go before me, so I'm driving around at like 110 miles an hour, and my wife passes me on the outside <laughs> at like 130. She still brings that up. I'm sure she does. So Wake Forest, as Ross said, content to just let the time run down inside of their five-yard line. Wake on top by 10 at halftime. Tom Stewart into the game due to an injury to Wiley Green, who started for the second time this season. Mike Bloomgren's team, 14 on the board after scoring just seven a week ago in a 14-7 loss in their opener at Mikey Stadium against Army. That's the end of the first half with the score. Wake Forest 24, Rice 14. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, proudly presented by Geico. Here in Houston between Wake Forest and Rice. Time now to get a look at tonight's first half stats. They're brought to us by DiGiorno. Ross Tucker, what grabs your eyes the most? Well, I would just say if you're looking at the time of possession, Rice is possessing the ball, which is what they wanted to, but Wake is scoring so quickly and moving so fast that obviously they have the edge. But remember, the score was 42 to three at halftime a year ago. Yeah. So Rice in a much better spot than they were in 2018. Well, and in that game, Sam Hartman was playing. Jamie Newman's doing it tonight. And Jamie Newman has completed passes to four different receivers with at least 30 yards to each of those targets. Well, he's got a bunch of gigantic receivers and he uses them well. That's Hinton, who's kind of the speedster. But you see Scotty Washington with the big body, the long arms. Sage Surratt with the big body, the long arms. Scotty Washington, how many times do I have to say this? The big body, the <laughs> long arms. I mean, it's unbelievable. Jamie Newman knows how to use those big bodies. 14 to 17, Washington had a drop. I love how much he trusts his receivers and their size advantage. So look at the key numbers and key player in this ball game so far, Jamie Newman, 14 out of 17 for 181, two touchdowns. Has yet to be sacked as Skiba puts the foot into it. And there is a fair catch called for by Austin Trammell. And if you're just joining us, this was inside of five minutes to go in the first quarter. Wiley Green, the redshirt freshman quarterback, trying to get into the end zone, took a heavy shot. Justin Sternad with the hit on him there. He had to be carted off. It was a lengthy, lengthy time until they took him off. They were very, very careful with him, as you always want to see. He gives a thumbs up. He was talking on his way off the field and certainly hoping for the best. For Wiley Green Ross. Right, when we've been told, gotten word that he does have feeling in his limbs, he's moving his limbs. So that's obviously a great sign. Tremendous to hear. Great to have you with us. That is Ross Tucker. My name is Ben Holden. And the third quarter underway is Nashawn Ellerby with a carry there on first down. Tom Stewart, 60%. And a rushing touchdown. He's thrown for 54 in relief of Wiley Green. Got off to a really good start, has cooled off a little bit. The negative has been taking a couple sacks that he probably should not have. They still want to major in and lean heavily on the run game and try to get the play action in off of that. Wake Forest 1-0, 38-35 win. They bring Trammell with it around the other way. And Trammell nearly got away, but could not completely get away from the pursuit of Luke Masterson. Nice tackle around the backside. 
I am really impressed by Nick Leverett, the left guard. Watch the right side of your screen. Leverett out there gets a nice block, as did Chafe in the center. Man, if Masterson doesn't chase that down and make the play, yeah. Rice would have had a really big game. Masterson has been very impressive, and he, they still have him back there in the back end. He's the rover, yep. typically, and filling in for Nasir Green, who had the targeting foul last week, but it's the second half, and they still have him back there. Rice already approaching what they had last week for total plays from scrimmage. They look for Trammell. They're incomplete. The Hunt team will come on. They only had 44 plays last week, and their seven-point loss at Army is... Sage Surratt goes back. He'll await the punt. Looks like Barnes has come on. Chris Barnes, former walk-on, now turned captain. Tight end turned punter. Yeah. His first career punt last week, 38 yards. This hit somebody in the back and then deflected by them. And Rice will down this inside of the 20-yard line. All the way down to the I call down there to touch it at the 18 yard line here in the opening 90 seconds of quarter number three here from Houston, Texas. 53 yard punt. First half possessions for Dave Clausen's guys, Ross. Four out of six scores is pretty good against the defense in Rice that held Army to 231 yards rushing and just 14 points last week that was the fewest points army had scored since the opener against duke last year and the fewest points they scored at home since 2017. well the ball at the 40 they went back and adjusted it i thought it hit somebody on that far sideline now we got a flag down so it's not at the 18. it's at the 40. defense number one five yard penalty still first down he sang bassy the guilty one That is a huge field position. It really is. Situation. Left side of the screen. You called it right away. Yeah. I couldn't tell who it hit, but it, it hit like one Bird. of the rice. Andrew Bird Newman taking a shot. Flag is down. And Washington. Scotty Washington. He had a couple drops earlier. He had a two or three last week and comes up with it here. There is a flag down, though. Wake Forest has some legit dudes. They really do have I some mean, legit they, dudes. Their quarterback, Newman, is good, and these receivers maybe don't run quite as well as... Offside, defense, number 32, penalties decline. Holding, defense, number 15, that penalty is decline. Result of the play is the first down. You know, maybe they don't run as well as their receiver Dorch last year is with the Jets practice squad right now. But they are so big. And that's a perfect throw. Drop I mean, that the is a, that is a Newman is Newman. I think people are gonna start to know his name nationally. When you look at what he did last year against NC State and Duke and Syracuse, the bowl and game, the bowl game against yeah. Memphis. Yeah. He outplayed Jordan Love last week. Jordan Love Supposedly going to be a first-round pick, maybe a top-10 pick out of Utah State. Yeah. At a career high in yardage, completions, attempts. Here for a wake record 401 in a season opener. Newman dumps it off over the middle. Inside of the 10, they get it to the tight end, Jack Rudenthal. Burden on the stop there. Newman's had one bad throw the whole game. That's it. The whole game. Yeah. And here they come at you again. Christian Beal Smith. Trying to keep the legs turning and burning there. Blaze Aldridge first to get to him. Tonight's red zone being brought to you by Verizon. Hard to get much better than that. Would be huge if Rice can hold him to a field goal here and keep it a two-score game. It would be for Rice's cause. Ten-point lead now. Hand it off. Good job by that front of Rice. We saw that last week. Miles Adams, first time I've called his name tonight, leading the charge there on Beal Smith. Haven't talked about many of the defensive linemen for Rice. Yeah. The veteran Wake front has done a nice job blocking them, but that time they brought pressure from Wake's left side, and Adams made the play. Keep your eye on these big receivers. 
They like those matchups back shoulder throws. You got Claude and Surratt to the near side. They go to the tight end at the five. He's wrapped up and wrestled down. Uh, Treshawn Chamberlain, third and goal coming up here, Ross. This is a critical play in this game. And when in doubt, Newman has leaned on his big receivers. So you've got Claude at the bottom, Washington and Surratt with Frudenthal at the top. All four are big boys. Third and goal. Knocked down by Rice. There's a flag down, though, in the vicinity of where D'Angelo Ellis and Stephen Claude were. So we'll await the word here from Jonathan Noli. So the ball was tipped, so it should not be interference. There's no foul for pass interference. The ball was tipped. Fourth down. So Bloomgren's guys, they do hold them. As Aldridge got his right paw on that one. And Skiba will trot on to try a field goal. That's a big stop there big by time. Rice. Yep, you're right. They needed to try to stay within two scores there. Nice job by Aldridge to get that big right hand up. Connected from 26 earlier, this one from 23. It's He's, a tough angle right there. It really is from that left hash. He's made 13 straight field goals going back to last year. And add another one, bullseye. 14 straight for Skiba. Sophomore out of Clover, South Carolina. So Bloomgren's guys give up points, but they don't give up a touchdown. 13 point game. Our last slide there about co-signing a green. Field, 27-14 our score. Wake Forest and Rice meeting for the fourth time, all time. Series tied at 1-1-1. One, one, one. There will not be a tie tonight. It's a good thing these schools play each other, I think. You know, they're both high academic, small, private schools. Wake has 5,000 students. Rice has 4,000 students. Yeah. Trying to attract the same type of student athletes makes sense. Austin Trammell on the return. Trammell, good one out close to the 25-yard line as Justin Sternad forced him out of bounds there. So Tom Stewart. Tiger, 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 Tiger. And the Rice offense will huddle up around Bloomgren. You kind of get the sense, even though it's early in the third quarter, Ben, that Rice needs to do something with this drive. Yes. But Wake is scoring fairly frequently. It's been a while since Rice was able to put some points on the board and get on the move. Charlie Booker. It's an all-Harvard backfield. All-Harvard backfield. Very high IQ in that backfield. Booker coming back from an injury. Decent pick up there, Travion Red with a stop there. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, as a as a Princeton alum, <laughs> I knew it was coming. I'm, I'm glad these guys are wearing, you know, rice colors rather than Harvard Crimson right now. <laughs> glad they're not playing against the orange and black this year. That's right. Booker. I'm happy for him, by the way. You know, you yep. go to a place like Harvard, they graduated, yep. they had a year of eligibility left. They wanted to test themselves at the FBS level, start to take some grad classes. I think it's cool. Yep. Stewart from Dallas, Booker right here from Houston. It's out over the 30-yard line, wrapped up by Isang Bassey down low. Third down coming up for Stewart in the all offense. This is where they want to be. Third and four. You can still run it if you have to. I don't think that they will. They're bringing in a bunch of receivers. The key here is for Stewart to get the ball out of his hands quickly. They need four. Trammell is in the slot to the right. Pete. That's the guy they want to go to. Pete right out there. wide, yep. Austin Pete, three catches in the first half. Stewart, plenty of time. Now the pocket collapses, steps out of it, fires. And unable to come up with that grab out across the 40-yard line was August Pete. Fourth down coming up. He wanted Trammell, but well, tra he was well covered. He was looking at Trammell all the way, but they were all over him. Third three and out for Rice. There's Sage Surratt. Surratt, I mentioned earlier, the only 
Mr. Basketball and Mr. Mr. Football, football in Theater, North Carolina. Let me just tell you, Ben, if that was me, I would wear a T-shirt every day <laughs> that said, I'm, I'm Sage Surratt, State Player of the Year in football and basketball, only guy ever. Makes the fair catch there with 9.50 to go on the corners. Nunez sends that one down inside of their territory. And we'll take a timeout. Still a 13-point lead for Wake Forest. And natural disasters like Hurricane Dorian. You can visit redcross.org for more information. Feel for those in the Bahamas. Devastated down there. Thankfully, the storm, for the most part, stayed away from the continental United States. So Wake has scored, Ross, on five of their seven drives. They've got the football back here once again. They'll begin this drive from the 28-yard line. Scotty Washington is the receiver at the bottom here. It's Kenneth Walker in the backfield. Kenneth Walker got out of there before they got to Newman on that mesh point. Blaze Aldridge made the stop on Walker, and you've been talking about it. It's the theme, certainly, with this Wake team. They got height. 6'5", 225, 6'3", 215. All great-looking physical kids, and you need that in the ACC. They don't really have the speed of some of the teams they go against, but they're able to make up for it with the size. Yeah. You know, even when Washington and Surratt especially are covered, they're still open and wouldn't be surprised if Newman throws it to one of them here on third down. They've got another one on their two deep. A.T. Perry not in action that we've seen. He's 6'5", too. There's Surratt over the middle of the grab. Stopped there by Calderon, but it's a first down for Wake Forest. Watch Surratt. He runs a little curl route middle of the field. They do such a nice job of squaring up to the quarterback, showing him a target. Hit it, hit it, hit it, it is a big target. Gain of 11 on the pass play. Kenneth Walker finding a seam left side. Good pick up there, about five, maybe six on the run. Watch how slow they are on these mesh points. Patient. I mean, he's like chopping his feet. Walker's chopping his feet for a few <laughs> steps, and then he explodes. Right. Once again, they do the same thing to Walker. And, and you brought that up. And their offensive coordinator Warren Ruggiero yesterday. What, what take away from what he told you in regard to that? Well, they they're usually reading somebody, so watch how long they hold there. I mean, Walker's not even running; he's just taking a step or two forward. It, almost every run reminds me of like a Le'Veon Bell run. Yeah, the patient former Steelers with the Jets now. Here's Newman trying to drop one into the bucket for Washington. And the coverage down there by D'Angelo Ellis may have got a piece of that one. There's an injured Wake Forest offensive lineman. There is, back around the 45. Oh, that still should have been caught. Ellis got his hand in there, but Washington should have caught that. Justin Haran, who has had injury problems in his career, he's back for his redshirt season. With 8.02 left here in the quarter. He is the left tackle yep. captain. You absolutely don't want to see this. Six-year guy right there. Let's take a look and see yeah. if we can see anything. Tore his ACL a year ago. And their opener at Tulane. It's a nice job there. Oh, he steps Stepped on him. On Newman's foot. Yeah. He's already up and walking off. Good to see. For Always him. a good sign. Yep. You know, he came back for a sixth year. That's how much he loves it. Yeah. He was really one of the first big recruits that Wake got. He was committed to Rutgers. Yes. They got him to flip to Wake Forest. He wanted the academics, and they're so proud of him because mm -hmm. he's a guy that, you know, they, they, they weren't sure how well he would do academically early in here. He's already graduated, double major. Pretty really impressive. E exactly what they're looking for from a Wake Forest football player in this program. Out of the gun. Walker gets it, and nice job staying home there by Blaze Aldridge. He was not fooled at all there. He was patient, and then he was downhill. Watch Aldridge right there, left side of your screen. Patient, patient. I see it up. Go. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Patient, patient. Oh, I see it. I'm going. I'm going to go hit it. 
Well done by Aldridge. Third and 12, big play here for both teams. Newman fires, looking for Claude incomplete. So the Rice defense, they bow up. Name Smith out there on the coverage. Nobody was really open. They needed to throw it deeper down the field. So Newman trying to get into a really tough window there to Claude with Smith having outstanding coverage. So Brian Smith in the green polo shirt. He's Rice's defensive coordinator in his second year. He's impressive. He is. A couple of years at Michigan under Don Brown as their safeties coach. Maggio boots it away. Can he pin him? Gonna try. Yeah, touchback. Came close, but couldn't quite do it. The veteran. So Rice will get it back from the 25-yard line. Down by 13. 721 to go in the third. Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. We're here at Rice Stadium. Alongside Ross Tucker, my name is Ben Holden, all of our outstanding crew. Bill Thayer, our producer, Michael Frank, our director, and all the fine folks on our crew, and those cameramen and women and folks down in the heat. Tip of the cap to all you. Here's what Rice has coming up. They'll play Texas here in Houston at the home of the Houston Texans next week, right here on CBS Sports Network. Then they've got a game with Baylor on our air as well. Then they begin Conference USA play with La Tech and UAB. That is a tough schedule, man. It really is. It's really tough schedule. They start the year with six straight bowl teams. On the ground, Charlie Booker. Clock winding. And here's a look. At Texas's quarterback, Sam Ellinger, who they'll face next week, Ross. Well, Texas has a big game tomorrow, obviously, yeah, against they do. LSU. And if they win that one, man, Energy Stadium will be absolutely packed for Rice and Texas. I think Ellinger is the best quarterback Texas has had. Man, probably since Colt McCoy. I was that's what I was I was letting you say it first. That was my thought exactly as well. And Great push here by Wake Forest. Basham red, all kinds of white shirts in there. Brings up third down. Your Rice, you got to get something going here offensively. Try to chip away at this 13-point deficit. Well, you're, it's going to be hard to get something going if you're in third long. 44 last week along the banks of the Hudson. They've eclipsed that tonight. Wake Forest likes to play a lot of coverage here with two deep safeties zone coverage and then rally to the ball and make a play third and nine from the gun tom stewart over the middle look for trammel didn't connect bring the punt team on again smenda coverage there for wake forest it was nice protection against the stunts. He stepped up and was trying to fit the ball in a very, very tight window. Poorly thrown ball by Stewart. Didn't really give Trammell a shot. He has cooled off after that first couple drives. Barnes on to boot it away. It's a good roll. Surratt gets away from it. And Rice will down it. 29-yard line. Under six to play in the third quarter. Still a 13-point lead for the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Field that thermometer. Still a warm night here. It's 86, the air temp out. That's the average high for Houston, Texas this time of the year. But players playing through it. Wake Forest on top, 27 to 14. Rice has had three straight three and outs and just 10 yards here in the quarter, Ross. Not, not good. The offense for Rice is not helping out the defense. They're not doing their part here in the second half. Good to see Justin Haran, the big left tackle, back out there for the Demon Deacons. Yes, it is. A little shovel pass there to Christian Beal Smith, who got the nod here tonight. Elijah Garcia on the tackle there is Haran. See him back in there, as you said. 
Gain of three. Newman looking to the air. Now looks this way. Got a man open as Christian Beal Smith gets over the 40 yard line. He'll move the chains. Forced out by D'Angelo Ellis. Starting to wonder with this heat and three straight three and outs if the Rice defense is getting tired. They've rotated some guys in. Yep. Might have just been the three man rush, but they're not getting any pressure right now. Newman taking a shot. Washington down there. Washington's got it. Scotty Washington's got it. And Scotty Washington takes it in. Touchdown. 59 yards on the strike from Newman. Hello, Newman. Cannot imagine how fun it is to be a six foot five receiver with crazy long. I mean, watch this. Newman just throws it up. Scotty has a step on him, huh. reaches up. D'Angelo Ellis had perfect coverage, reached yeah. out. Watch, watch 12, puts his right arm up there. That is just a huge human being <laughs> who is significantly bigger and stronger than D'Angelo Ellis. Wow. Scott. Wake's receivers are fun to watch. They are. Nick Skibon to try to tack on the point after making a 20 point game, and he does just that right into the bullseye in the net. So Washington, solid night. Newman's on the phone again. We look back here, Ross. I don't know what you say. Look, he put his right arm in between Scotty Washington's two hands. He's not able to go up there and high point the ball like Washington is. So you need to try to rake the ball out on the way down. Newman's fired up and he should be. Must be fun to be able to throw the ball up to those guys. And look at Naeem Smith. Yeah. If we had a thought bubble above his head, it'd be like, man, these guys are big. I mean, on some of these, Ben, I really don't know what the coaching point is from the Rice coaches. Like, hey, that dude's four inches taller than you. Uh, try to, I mean, more than four inches taller. D'Angelo Ellis is 5'11", and Scotty Washington's 6'5", so he's got six inches on him. Makes it really hard. Did you play basketball, Ben? I did back in the day. I could shoot. All right, so I played basketball, and I was like six four and a half. I was pretty good, till I went up against a dude that was six nine, <laughs> and I got killed. I went, his name was Joey Linderman. He got a full scholarship to Drexel. I could usually score. I was pretty good, till I had a six nine guy covering me, yeah. and I couldn't do anything. Yeah. You got a guy that's five inches taller than you. You got major problems. And Scotty Washington, six inches taller than D'Angelo Ellis. Washington, seven grabs, career high 158 yards, and a career high two touchdowns. Fair catch call, four by Austin Trammell. Rice will have it first and 10 from their own 25. We'll see what Bloomgren tries to get his team doing here. As they now trail by 20 points, if they can find a way to put a drive together, this third quarter has not been good at all for them. So they want to try to keep the ball on the ground, but at this point now down yeah. 20 and they're not having success with the first and second down runs. They're going to have to put this game in Stewart's hands and see what he can do. This is not their strength, but the offensive line is better than they were a year ago. Stewart comes out firing. Rosner's got it. Just shy of the 30. Broke a tackle. And Brad Rosner, one of their JUCOs they brought in, Three of those junior college transfers, big first down for him. Rosner, bottom of the screen, is just a comeback route. Breaks the tackle of Richardson. He's physical. We saw that when he was blocking. Now we see that when he gets the ball. He's 6'5", 190 pounds. So Rice says, hey, we got some big receivers too. Yep. Rosner led junior college Wideouts receivers with 13 touchdowns a year ago. From the 45. Stewart tries the other way. The pitch and the catch from Rosner again on Amari Henderson, who he got away from on the other side on the last play. I'm picturing Jerry Mack, the OC for Rice, watching all of these big plays by Wake's big receivers, saying, you know what? We got a couple. We got a guy that's 6'5". Let's throw it to him. It seems like it, it's working, and back-to-back -back plays it is. The Sean Ellerby lined up in the backfield. You get a look there at Rosner. Ellerby next to Stewart. 
Under four to play in the third quarter. Stewart, time, looks, fires, and Myers was there, and he was rocked off the ball by Isang Bassey. Second 10 coming up. I like the way Bassey got his head out of it, and used his shoulder, and, and had the target low. Watch Bassey. Shoulder and in the midsection. That's what everybody's looking for in the sport of football these days. Try to keep the head out of it. Don't deliver a blow to the head or neck area. You can tell Bassey has been well coached, well trained. He lined them up, got the. Bassey last year in the wake win had a 51 yard fumble return for a touchdown, his second career touchdown. Cameron Montgomery, they try him on the ground, going nowhere. White shirts flying to the football there, brings up third down, and a critical one it is for Rice. The run game has really grinded to a halt at this point for Rice. They're going to have to rely on Stewart's strong right arm. And this has got to be four down territory. You're down 20 points at the 41 yard line. Yeah. They should try to split the difference here. You know, they can throw the ball underneath and try to get in the fourth and manageable. Don't need to get all 11 yards here. Four of 11 on third down are the Owls of Rice. Third and 11 here. On the ground. Montgomery with it again. That'll work. They did what you said. They knew they were going for it. Yep. That's a big part of going for it on fourth down is knowing about it on third down so you can make the play call with that in mind. Stewart to the wristband came in if you're just joining us late in the first quarter when Wiley Green, Mike Bloomgren's starting quarterback, had to be carted off. Fourth and five. They need the 30. Wake has no automatic check here against the empty set. Yep, five wide for Stewart. Stewart steps up, fires. Catch is made, first down, Rice. Lundgren dialed up the right play there as August Pete made the grab. They came with pressure off the edge. This offensive line's done a nice job yeah. in pass protection. And Stewart, he's got an arm, man. When he steps into it with that big right arm, he can put it on people. This is exactly what Rice needed after the big play by Scotty Washington. Cameron Montgomery now in the backfield. He gets it trying to cut back and wasn't much to cut back to is getting in there quickly and getting on him was a nose tackle Dion Burton Jr. You can tell that the weight defenders are still playing run first. Guys like Masterson and Sternad were downhill. Bergen Jr., the strongest player on the team. He is in the 1,500 pound Saw club. That. <laughs> that is for squat, bench. I don't know at their school if they do deadlift or power clean, but 1,500 pounds. That hurts my back at this age. Just <laughs> thinking about it. Eight play to drive. Pitch and catch by Austin Trammell. <laughs> Under 60 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. Rice looking to put one in the end zone here and trim a 20-point deficit. Third and eight upcoming. And again here, Ben, I'm, I'm thinking four down territory because yep. you're down 20. A field goal puts you down 17. That doesn't help you. It's still three scores. So make the play call here knowing you're going to go for it on fourth down if you don't get it because the field goal doesn't really help you. Yeah, and Will Harrison missed two last week, but I'm with you. More than that, you want the touchdown at this point. Blitz coming by Red, and that play is going to be blown dead. Smenda pressured in there, and Bothroyd had the football running back the other way saying, Really That's so fast. Smenda's pass. up at the Fourth top for Red right there. The other guys are going to drop out. The other two linebackers drop out. Red comes off the edge unblocked. Yeah, it was off the turf. Totally blew up the screen there. He's lucky he didn't get a penalty for tossing Stewart down there at the yeah, end of that play. He is. So 22 seconds remain.
Fourth and seven for Rice. They need the 15 yard line. And they convert again. Pressure comes. Stewart floats it out. Rosner trying to get there. There's a flag. Came in from the back of Ari Henderson on the coverage. Lundgren looking for it. And I believe he's going to get it. The safety was really on the hash, so it was going to be tough for him to get over and be a part of that. Toss interference, defense number four. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yep, so it is on Henderson. They've really been going after him. Rosner with two catches against him. Here's the penalty. Well, it's, it's just a nine route, which is a straight go route. I, I don't know about that one. Let's see it again here. There's some tugging going on. I think Rosner did a nice job of drawing that penalty. Look at Bloomgren. That was the right guy to throw the ball to, though, because the safety was never going to be able to get over there to really help. So now it sets up a first and goal for Rice from the seven yard line. Mari Henderson there. Trammell up top, Cameron Montgomery. Behind Regan Williams, the fullback. Man-to-man -man coverage, top and bottom, really. They give it to Williams, the bruiser out of Ohio. Brad transfer from Stanford. And we're under 10 seconds remaining in this third quarter. That'll be the final play of the quarter. We'll head to the fourth. Rice will have its second and goal. The third quarter. As they trail by 20, that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Wake Forest 34, Rice 14. Great to have you with us tonight. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network. Dirty work in tonight's game brought to us by Coyote. How about the Wake defense? Well, first it was Luke Masterson getting a hand on the football, then Boogie Basham. Not always going to get sacks or interceptions or even hits on the quarterback. Got to find a way to make a play and help your team anyway. Masterton and Basham doing the dirty work. They are indeed. And Rice so far on this drive as we start the fourth with Ross Tucker. My name is Ben Holden, all of our great crew. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Ten plays, 69 yards, 504 as Nashawn Ellerby, the deep back behind Williams, the fullback. Rolling out is Stewart, trying to cut back. He's already got a rushing touchdown, trying for another. And he comes up a little shy as Boogie Basham got him down around the ankles. He wanted Myers in the flat initially, number seven. That's what he had. Out. Put it on right there. Thought he should have thrown it to Myers in the flat right away. Injured Wake Forest player down on the field. Travion Red. Travion Red, yes. And Red is starting at Rover tonight because Masterson is at safety because Nasir Greer was out for the first half with a targeting penalty yep. from last week against Utah State. Now Nasir Greer is in the game. Number three. I like Wake's helmets. Big fan of them too. Big fan of the chrome, the uh, gold ones, the shiny gold ones too. Here's a look at the uh, last play. Red came in late. Stewart looked like he got him. Yeah, maybe even his teammate Francis. Yeah. Both kind of run in, ran into that left leg. So he walks off. That was the junior, Travion Red. Third and a couple here, yes. Ben. This is clearly four down territory. Oh, no question. So they can still elect to pound it here twice if they want to. Wake is running three guys on here late. They're not lined up. LRB the deep back. Stewart, though, looks to fling one out there and unable to come up with that was French. He sang Bassey on the coverage. Robert French, one on one against Bassey. He's got about seven inches <laughs> on Bassey. But Stewart didn't really give him a great opportunity to go up and get the ball. There's a flag down, late flag in the end zone. Defense, 12 minute formation. Half the distance to the goal. Replay, third down. 
Not too many on the field for Wake Forest. You know, it's interesting because th two guys ran off, three guys ran on. But, but I thought maybe the issue was Travion Red. Let's take a look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Yep. There you go. So three guys ran off, two guys ran on, but I thought, I'm sorry, the opposite. I thought perhaps Red had already walked off because of the injury. Leverett's in it. H back in the backfield as Ellerby trying to dive his way through there and cannot do it. Jaquez Williams wrapped him up and stopped him, brings up fourth and goal now. Too slow. Too slow. The guy off the edge was able to make the play. You got to hand it to him soon enough that the guy off the edge can't make the play. And they also have run that play too many times, Ben. You know, just the straight dive behind Leverett with the jump over the top. Yeah. Wake is all over that now. What is that? About a handful of those they've had him in there for. He had a three or four in the first half, it seemed like. So I fourth still think, and goal. I still think you get a lean on your offensive line here. Yeah. I still think you run the ball right at him. You get all these grad transfers. You want to be a physical football team. I think Bloomgren's going to call timeout and think timeout about it. Rice, their first. When we resume, seconds. it'll be the 13th play of the drive. And it's Tom Stewart trying to lead Rice back into the end zone, trailing by 20 here with 13.38 to play in the fourth quarter. So I think you got to decide as a program right now, if you're Rice, what are you? Yeah. Are you going to try to get cute here with a play action pass? See if Stewart can find somebody, or are you going to say, hey, this is Rice football, and if we don't get a half yard, we don't deserve to be back in this game anyway. Yeah. I think personally, you send a message to your team and your offensive line that you believe in them, right. and you run the ball right at Wake Forest. Which, of course, means they'll do play action pass and the dude will be wide open. <laughs> you nailed a few last week in our first game of the season, so. I think it's about a mentality. Yeah, I do, it's too. About, it's about what you want to be as a program. Well, the, the brand, the slogan here is intellectual brutality. Smart, physical way to play football. Let's see if they can do it here, Ross, and power this thing in on fourth and goal. Stewart got popped by Sternad, who came around the end. And Wake Forest says, I don't think so. What a play by Justin Sternad. They tried to trick him, and Sternad was having nothing of it. So smart by Sternad because he knows off the edge he can't make the play on the dive anyway. Watch him come off the edge. He knows he can't make the play on the running back anyway, so might as well come outside and just eats up Stewart who had no chance whatsoever. That is so well done by Sternad. Fifth-year senior making another big-time play. On two guys, Ellerby and Sternad. Ellerby, I think, would have scored if they handed the ball to him. Sternad knows he couldn't get in on that, so he kept his responsibility and was all over the quarterback. I think Rice thought Sternad would come down the line, try to get in on the dive, and that they would fool him, and it would be a walk-in. But Sternad's a fifth-year senior who's played way, way too much football. So Wake Forest takes over, and they give it off to the freshman, Kenneth Walker. They wanted to get him in last week. They didn't. They've gotten him in this week, and Kenneth Walker trying to run away from him. Kenneth Walker takes it. 96-yard touchdown run after Sternad made that play. That's a wow. That's a couple. He is a freshman who the coaches told us they wanted to give him a little more playing time. And with Cade Carney out, this was a perfect opportunity to give him some playing time. Patient again, huge hole. Poor angle by the safety. And then how about the finishing speed? At 210 pounds with all these DBs coming for him, D'Angelo Ellis even grabs his legs and he keeps going. Chamberlain missed a tackle on that as well as Skiba bangs it through for the point after, and it's a 41-14.
Wake Forest lead as Kenneth Walker. No walking on that one. A trot to the end zone. 96 and in for Wake Forest. They're all over Rice. Freshman out of Arlington, Tennessee. A 96-yard touchdown run, the longest in Wake Forest school history, the third 90-plus yard touchdown run, but the longest by the freshman. Very, very high on him, and it was the very next play after Justin Sternad made the play on Tom Stewart, set him up first down at their own four, and Walker did the rest. So interesting talking with the coaches yesterday. They said they wanted to give him some snaps, but he's a, tr a freshman and a true freshman at that. They were worried that he might make some mistakes, but they said, man, he's talented. He might make a big play and give up a big play. Well, he made one, that's for sure. Fair catch called for inside of the five yard line by Austin Trammell. The NFL season is here, and Sunday we're taking many of you out to Cleveland or Jacksonville, where two of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the game, Baker Mayfield and Patrick Mahomes, make their highly anticipated 2019 debuts. It all starts with the NFL Today on CBS. So, quarterbacks in college to wide receiver in the pro ranks. Former Rice, Emanuel, dad, yeah, former Rice, Rice Owl on there. Terrell Pryor, the best high school football player I've ever seen. Obviously, Kendall Hinton for Wake Forest could be on that list, too, if he's able to make the NFL. Yeah. Good pick up here as Stewart delivers to Brad Rosner. First down for Rice, gain of 15 on the pitch and catch. Wake Forest has a lot of backups in the game now. They know they play UNC a week from now. Yeah. Don't want to take the chance to get anybody injured. Plus, this is great experience for the second string guys to get these snaps. They're not going to get these snaps in the ACC games. That's one of the advantages of getting a big lead like this. Stewart comes out firing again at the 45. It's Rosner again. And it took three to slow him up. So I would expect Wake to stay in what they call quarters coverage, which is four deep defenders that all have their quarter of the field. You don't want to give up anything deep. You want to keep everything in front of you. And you really want to try to keep them in bounds. I mean, there's a lot of time left on the clock, but you like to try to keep that, that clock running as much as you can. Wouldn't be surprised if both corners end up dropping back. Stewart, Jordan Myers wrestled out of bounds there. Good read by a freshman here in McCollum. You'll see 15 right there, Shamar McCollum. He sees Myers go out and immediately identifies that, gets out there and makes a play. It's a good sign for Lyle Hemphill, the defensive coordinator, when you got a freshman his first, making a play like that. Sorry, his first full season at Wake Forest as their defensive coordinator. Five games into last year, he took over. And Henderson, who they picked on on the last drive, broke that one up nicely, brings up fourth and six for Rice. Stewart, very fortunate that that was not intercepted. Rice going to punt it away here. Yeah. A lot of time left, but Lundgren opting to bring on the punt group here, trailing 41-14, and number 14, Sage Surratt's back as Barnes, former walk-on senior now, on to boot it away. Be curious to see who Wake brings out on offense. Yeah, me too. Would, would imagine we'll see Hartman. Fair catch made by Sage Surratt and Jamie Newman up on the marquee. The difference maker brought to you by Geico tonight, certainly for Wake Forest. He has been as advertised, so impressive and really impressive physically. Talking with him yesterday and then look at Scotty yeah. Washington. He, and he even had a drop or two yeah, tonight, did. but he it did. didn't stop him from making some tremendous plays.
been very good and 158 for him. Surratt had 158 last week, a career high for him receiving. Jamie Newman still in the ball game. That's one where if Newman's still in and you're Dave Clawson, you say under no circumstances do you get touched by anybody right. ever. DeAndre Delaney, his first carry here tonight. They have made a few adjustments up front. Some of the veteran guys are out as they're getting some of their backup offensive linemen in as well. These are invaluable reps. Naya, Nash. They got Benzinger over at left tackle, which he played last year. Mm -hmm. When Haran went down. Zach Tom, the center, still in the game. Delaney remains in the game at running back. And he'll take it, bursting up the middle. Good look and run from Delaney there. Excellent work. And Scotty Washington at career high 158 and two. Here's a look at his resume reel today. Well, he's just done such a nice job of using his size and his arms to make plays. Look at that body control, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, at 6'5, 225 pounds, to have the body control that he does. Look at that. Beautiful. And to stay on his feet and then break another tackle? Can't even imagine how fun that must be. What was it like for him in high school, being a 6'5 receiver, <laughs> just dunking on kids? Yes, I'm sure. St. John's High School in Washington, D.C. he attended. Been on the ground with Delaney again here. First down for... Yes. I didn't even realize until you just said that. What? That Scotty Washington went to St. John's High School. He did. That's where my niece goes. Okay. Caroline Lamana. She's a freshman there. Field hockey and lacrosse at St. College High School. Do you know who went there? Do you know why they're a football powerhouse now? Uh, give me a hint. Under Armour. Kevin Plank. Okay. Founder of Under Armour. Went there. And they have built a, a perennial top 20 program. Wake Forest, 35 or more in four straight games. Longest streak for them in that department in school history. And they've done a lot of really, really good things offensively, as Ross touched on earlier tonight. Delaney to carry the last two, three years under Dave Clawson now in year number six. Are you surprised? that Hartman's not in the game? A little bit, yeah. I, I am. I am. I mean, I am. They've got backups in pretty I much am. everywhere. I would think you'd want Hartman in the game to get him some snaps this year. And also, in case the read calls for the quarterback to run, because Newman's not even reading it right now. Yeah. He's been told it's a give. You're giving yes. it to the running back no matter what. But if you put a backup quarterback in there, you know, they'd be able to go in there and and run the ball. Delaney again. A couple they're going to give him. They'll give him the progress. So we come up on eight to play in the ball game. Wake Forest up 41-14. Third down upcoming. Third and about eight. Delaney got into eight games last year. Had. 89 plays to his credit and there's Sam Hartman who in his debut last year on right here on CBS Sports Network absolutely lit it up everything about that kid's awesome right there the mustache yep. the haircut yeah he's got his his belly out I like I've never met Sam Hartman but I like him already he was one <laughs> of five freshman quarterbacks to start the opener last year started the first nine games and then broke his leg against Syracuse his debut, he went 31 for 51 for 378, two touchdowns and an overtime win. That game last year, Garcia, Elijah Garcia on the tackle of DeAndre Delaney there. So Newman of the offense will head off. The punt group will come on. As we move in on seven to play in this one. Jordan Myers, number seven. Austin Trammell, number 10, back deep, awaiting the punt. I'm looking forward to that Wake UNC game next Friday night. That'll be a good game. That will be and, a good and, game. And the Rice-Texas game. 
here on CBS Sports Network. It'll be on. Rice is good enough that they could they could hang with the Longhorns, I think, if things go well. They hung with the Demon Deacons for a while. Yep. They'll have Baylor on our air the next week here at home. Spot this one out of bounds. 35 yard line. We'll take a timeout here from Houston. 628 remaining in a 41-14 lead for Wake Forest. Forest in control, 41-14. First and 10 for Rice. They're on 35. Six on the run there. That was the best run. Charlie Booker. By a Harvard quarterback handing the ball to a Harvard <laughs> running back in Rice football history. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say that right now. It's a short limb. Trammell's got it. Works his way through there. Austin Trammell gets the first down, takes it out to midfield. Love that pregame backflip he does. Looked like Ozzie Smith back in his days. Gain of nine. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. I love that guy, period. Trammell's fun to I watch. I do, too. I think that they could, if you're looking for a fair critique, mm -hmm. I think they could do a better job getting the ball to Trammell more. Yeah. Officials time out for injury. There's a wake player down. There is. I DM as soon as we can here. Look, like it was way far away from the play. As a reminder, Wake has a lot of backups out there. It's pretty much second string guys across the board. Yeah. Can't see who it is yet. 543 to play in this game. Yeah, yeah. What's the first time they had those matte helmets like that? The Vikings have those. Oh, I, I like that look. I really like the yeah. matte helmet. I do too. I like it I a lot. I don't even know what matte means, but I know that that's what it looks like, and I know I really like it. It's just flat. It's like flat paint. So Kobe Davis. Some attention. They'll walk him off and check him out further on the sidelines here. First and ten for midfield upcoming for Tom Stewart. Dallas product came into the game late stages of quarter number one Wiley Green injured we've got gotten some word on him not a lot but he was carted off the field Stewart fires far side grab made by Austin Trammell making another play is their captain gain of eight Trammell top of the screen just an out pattern Actually kind of ran a curl and then slid out. Not what you're looking for like from a textbook out route where he put his left foot in the ground and break out. It's a good feeling for those guys right there. It certainly is. They've all been part of turning Wake football around. Stern had said he's not surprised at all. He, he knew this was going to happen. This is what Coach Clawson told him would happen. And so they're right where he thought they'd be. Stewart over the middle catch made first down French with a catch Of course the clock stops on a first down in college football I really don't know why that is by the way. I mean, I know that's just the rule But it doesn't need to be the rule. It's just a way to Make the game slower right if anything. Yeah, yeah, the NFL game goes faster because they don't have that rule clock stops while they set the chains yep if they were ever looking to speed up the game of college football that would be one way they could do it pretty easily yeah I agree with you on that a lot's been changed in the last let's say five years looking for Rosner incomplete second down coming up a lot of times a throw like that is even harder in college football than it is in the NFL because the hash marks are wider. So when Stewart's on the right hash to throw an out to the left, you got to really put a lot of mustard on that football. 
Look at the hash marks there you're referring to. So the NFL hash marks are more like right here and here. Yeah. So the the deep out to the far side is is not as far of a throw. If he throws it out to the left here, that is a far throw. It is. Stewart. And they're gonna get him, wrap him up, take him down. Has Williams in there leading the charge for Wake's defense. Williams has made a couple plays. Top of your screen. He's going to come late. It's Booker's responsibility. 23. Booker goes low. Williams avoids it. Can't duck your head like that if you're Booker. You got to go chest to chest, face mask to face mask. And if you're going to cut, you got to cut earlier and you got to get him down. Fourth sack of the night for Wake's defense. No sacks so far this season for Weiss. In almost two games played. Third and 15. Stewart. That's Rosner. The 31 yard line he goes. Travion read the, the tackle there on the receiver Rosner. The one thing that really jumped out talking with the Rice kids versus the Wake Forest guys yesterday, you know, the two Rice guys we talked to were both 19 years old. Yes. And, and they looked like they're 19 they years did. old. And the Wake Forest, Jamie Newman, Justin Sternad, Justin Sternad, 22 and 23 years old. Yep. You know, this is what's going to happen. When you have 22 year olds playing against 19 year olds. Yeah. Rice is trying to build this program like Clawson built Wake. Yes. There's the throw and Aust August Pete. Nice job by him to reel that in going down to the turf. And he picks up 13, 12, 12 and a half, we'll call it, to move the chains. He is absolutely something to build on for this team out of this game. For sure. It's only 6 to 170 pounds, red shirt freshman from Louisiana, but he's made several plays in this game. He has a 43 inch vertical he's got. Talked about Sage Surratt, how good of a basketball player he was, the top player in North Carolina. Say the same about Pete. Austin Trammell trying to get away. Trammell, no quitting him, and Trammell takes it in. 19 yard touchdown for the junior captain. Austin Trammell with a minute 51 to go in the game. Looked like he was going to be trapped and taken down. He gets away, Ross. He is like the Energizer Bunny. Stops, breaks a tackle, cuts back the other way, gets a rub route by the umpire, and scores. <laughs> Look at this. I think the umpire helps him out here. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Splits him. Yep. And that's something. No that quitting Coach him. Bloom, right, and that's something no Coach quit. Bloomgren will show the team yep. tomorrow. Absolutely. Say, Look, even though we were down, we want to be just like number 10. Rice fight never dies. We're pretty different. One 20 point lead for Wake Forest on top of Rice. And coming up next, join CBS Sports Network in the studio in New York as our team of experts break down all the matchups going on around the nation. It's inside college football on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. So Rice gets it to a 20 point game. Nine plays, 65 yards, took 407. And the 19 yard touchdown reception by the young man there with a the headband on, Austin Trammell, their junior captain. No quit in his game. Like you said, I love what you said going to break there. Well, that's the motto. Rice has two, intellectual brutality and Rice fight never dies. And yep. that's something that Coach Bloomgren will build on and feel really good about. Fair catch called for the five yard line by Christian Beal Smith and Wiley Green started this game. Their red shirt freshman quarterback out of Plano, Texas. He was carted off the field with less than five minutes to go in the opening quarter. The last and only update we've been given at this point is he is has feeling in his extremities. So that is some good news. That's all we have at this point. But that's what we were told from the Rice folks at this point in time. So we wish him the best in whatever he has to do to to get better. Absolutely. And in comes Tavon Bowers to play quarterback. 
He's really the third string quarterback. Yeah. For Wake Forest. And he hands it off. They're just going to chew up this clock here. Yeah, two things, Ben. Number one, Bowers went to Bishop McDevitt High School in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I could literally walk there from my house. Really? From where I live. Yeah, Ricky Waters played there. Nice. LaShawn McCoy. And what this tells me, or at least a possibility, I don't know this, but perhaps they're hoping to be able to redshirt Hartman this year. Right? I mean, Could be. they're not going to use them unless Newman were to get hurt and they needed them. But in a situation like this, you play Bowers yeah. and maybe you save a year of eligibility for Sam Hartman. Why waste a year of eligibility yeah. for Hartman for, for, for end of the game duty like this? Yep. Final minute to play in this one. Well. Wake in control and they're going to get out of town here with a victory. Down here in Houston, they'll play again. They'll have their third straight Friday night game against North Carolina next week. Final line on Jamie Newman. So much respect for that young man. Yep. You know, he last year he's a red shirt sophomore, and he loses the job to a true, to a freshman. true freshman. And nowadays, that's like automatic transfer portal. That's right. automatic right, right, right. transfer, and I'm yeah. out of here. He said he never considered it. Never thought of it. Thought his time or opportunity would come again at some point. Yes. And it did after Hartman went down, and yep. he took it and ran with it. Should be the final snap of the game here on third down. And Wake Forest will improve to 2-0 and with a 20-point win here tonight against Rice. The Owls drop to 0-2. Dave Clawson. First road test of the season for his guys, and they pass it. Their fourth straight win on the road, the most in 13 years. Two coaches with a conversation there, and you touched on it. Clawson did it at Wake, built them back into a team that they win bowl games, they win big games, and. Mike Bloomer trying to do that here at Rice. I thought it was the ultimate compliment he gave, just talking about how into it the Rice kids were last week against Army on the sideline. Our final score, Wake Forest 41, Rice 21. For Ross Tucker, Oliver Crew, my name is Ben Holden. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now to New York City for Inside College Football with Brent Stover and the guys.